in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you oh graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So there are certain things we must always expect here. Number one, encounters. Koinonia has been designed by God. Our ministry to the body is to create a platform for people to have dramatic encounters with God. An encounter is an experience that makes a person real. When you meet me, you can say you have had an encounter. Because in meeting me, you will have the opportunity to have a closer look. You will talk with me. You will be able to interact with me. You will be able to understand my ideology. This is what an encounter is. So through the, the ministrations, through the worship, through the testimonies, and everything that we do, we seek to stimulate an atmosphere that brings encounters in the lives of people. It is my personal opinion that you are not a Christian if you have not encountered God. It doesn't matter how long you have been to church, if you have not had a personal encounter. We used to say it before, now preachers don't say it. They just say, do you know God? And we know that God means everything to people. God is a bottle of minerals somewhere. God is a shrine somewhere. An encounter. They call it a personal encounter encounter. You can have a corporate encounter, but everyone needs a personal encounter, an experience that makes Jesus real to you, an experience that makes the life of God real to you. There's no hope of turning back after an encounter. It's not about trying. It is impossible to want to opt to go back. An encounter. Very important. Hallelujah. Number two, the second thing that we represent to the body is a platform where an understanding of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom is received. It is important to know that God has committed unto us the message of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom is the understanding of the principles of the kingdom that seeks to reveal to the believer his responsibility, the part he has to play as far as experientially enthroning Lord is concerned and then extending the influence of his reign. We have that assignment to be able to make men see, to bring people to an understanding where they understand that um, if we are to command victory in life, it will be on the strength of the mysteries, the principles of the kingdom. So this is a place of understanding. That's why you never hear people tell you oh, stories, stories here and there. We are concerned about you having the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. That is the only basis for a victorious life. Emotions don't produce victory. Listen, listen. Emotions don't produce victory. There are so many emotional things happening in the body of Christ. People cry, they jump, and, and, and I'm not against all these things, except for the fact that if they do not have life applicable, kingdom founded principles, they are not going to produce results in the lives of people. And you know, the system of God is such that after a period of God investing in your life, he will expect fruit. He came and saw the fig tree and cursed it. Why? Because it could not produce. So if you claim to have been around the things of God at a point in your life, there should be evidences. Evidences. Something should start working. Everything cannot go bad. 
if everything is bad in your life, then something must be wrong. And you must seek to find out, not look for who to blame. You see that? Because that's what we do. We look for someone to blame. We look for demons to blame. And sometimes they are guilty, but not all the time. We look for parents to blame. We look for government to blame. In this place, we cultivate the spirit of responsibility. That if anything will ever change in your life, it's up to God and you. Not God alone, not you alone. So koinonia comes as the word that defines that experience. Partnership. It takes partnership between God and man for anything notable to happen. We're very responsible people. We believe that my destiny and your destiny is not just in the hands of God to decide. Uh -uh. We have a role to play and that our assignment as individuals and as a people is to make sure that we are hands-on on our own part of the partnership. Because the problem is usually from us, never from him. You've been faithful, Lord, through the ages past. Always faithful. That is why your name is forever. That means if my life is not moving forward, listen. If my life is not moving forward, I will be stupid to blame God. Are we together? I must understand that God, his name is faithful. It's not an attribute he has. The Bible calls him in Revelations faithful and true. There is no shadow of turning in him. So if anything is wrong in my life, things are not working, I'm not reflecting the reality of the word of God. I must with all meekness take responsibility and say, look, there is something I do not know or there is something I have not understood. There is something I have not believed. The moment you assume the position of responsibility, you are ready for divine help. God will never come and stretch his hands towards the people who are not ready to take responsibility. Are we together? The third thing that God has anointed and assigned us to do is the ministry of signs and wonders. Listen, you must understand that the ministry of signs and wonders is way beyond the ministry of miracles. The ministry of miracles is largely limited to bodies and all of the signs and wonders um, are supernatural occurrences that challenge the belief systems of men and cause them to see the sovereignty of God displayed in the midst of the people. That's why you see certain things. They are not necessarily miracles. You understand? Someone can be shouting outside. I can tell you two people are going to shout right now. That's not a miracle. That's a sign and a wonder. Are we together now? Yeah. All of a sudden supernatural occurrences begin to happen. All kinds of strange demonstrations of the spirit. I can be saying God is giving you speed and then you see people start running physically. Why are they acting out those things? It's a ministry of signs and wonders. When you understand this, when you bring someone for the first time and the person is, are you sure this guy is not a herbalist? You tell him, no, 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 no. This is part of the call. There is an anointing for signs and wonders. Very few people on earth have it. Many people have the anointing for miracles, but not signs and wonders. He says, I will show signs in the heavens and wonders blood fire and smoke these are three mysteries i will show signs in the heaven prophet joel told us that is part of what comes with the outpouring of the spirit so aside from healing miracles aside from deliverances and all of that signs and wonders meaning that when you come for koinonia you expect the limitless dimensions of the holy spirit demonstrated without restraint anything can happen i can be talking and all of a sudden, someone is shouting. And if you do not know that is part of the package here, you may be afraid. But when you know, when you hear someone shouting, instead of looking and saying, I hope this guy is not lying, you just say, God is here. And he's here for me too. You see that? Yeah. Very important. When you understand these things, there are other auxiliary assignments, of course, the blessings of the kingdom, financial prosperity, the wealth of the kingdom, and so on and so forth. Everything God has sent me to do, everything God has sent us as a ministry to do, we are unapologetic about it. Why am I saying this? That means if I claim to be sent by God, 
And if I claim to be teaching you and you are participating in what I am saying, it means if you are not changing to become what I claim God has asked me to do, something about my call and election must be questionable. If I claim God has called me to heal the sick and I pray for 100 people and not one person gets healed, I need to go back to God and say, Lord, something is wrong somewhere. Transformed lives are the, like the trophies. The Bible calls them the seals of apostleship. Right? So that you look at your life and say, my God, look at what God has done in my life. I came and I met Jesus. My life has changed. So he releases the anointing that is responsible to produce that result. That's why many of us are gathered. That's why the testimonies are here. And tonight will be no different in the name of Jesus. You will always learn something when you come to the presence of God. I'm, I'm, the goal here is not to make you aware. You must understand that beyond the words you are hearing, there is an anointing that backs it up. That anointing is what empowers you to perform. Otherwise, all I'm giving you is a lecture. It's an intelligent lecture. Because some of the things that I'm communicating, some of them are products of researches. The research does not have an anointing in itself. It just has information. But when that research is taken in the place of prayer, something comes upon it. It's no longer a lecture note. Are you seeing now? So when I'm speaking to you ordinarily, you would not have believed what I'm saying. But there is an anointing upon it that compels you not only to believe, but receive the grace and you will stand up and receive and reproduce the result. Listen, let me tell you. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The ministry of transformation is a system you must understand. If you are in this place and you are called into ministry, whether you have started or not, pay attention. Get ready for empty pews if you don't understand the technology that transforms men. People will hype you and you will be excited for a few months waiting for the next person who will open church near you and they will all move there and leave you because they are tired of your stillness. There's got to be something that brings freshness to people. Are we together now? When a businessman comes to Koinonia, he must find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister to him. When a student comes, he must find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister. So, when our little children, our little ones, as small as they are, they must be able to find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister to them. Failure to do that, we are not in ministry. We are just acting on stage. Hallelujah. And this comes with a price. Prayer is only one of the price. It comes with diligence. That's why I challenge a lot of people, especially those who want to go into ministry. You know, most people think ministry is a lazy man's work. When you don't get a job, you know, they didn't give you employment all around, you just quietly go and start ministry. No, ministry is not for lazy people. Ministry is for diligent people. The, the hours it takes to prepare just a simple message that you deliver in, 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 in one hour or so. And now we, we live in a, a technology-driven society. You mention one Greek word, you are lying about it. Someone is checking right away and telling his name. He said, no, no, no. It was 1997, this word. It was a mistake. He will even say the article where you got it wrong. It takes intelligence, not just spirituality. You should not just say something. You must have something to say. Everybody is saying something. People don't listen to talkatives again. So on one side, you are contending for the power, the grace, and the anointing. But on the other side, you must give people information that is worth their time. Nobody has time to waste listening to junks and nonsense. You can impress yourself as a man of God and flatter yourself together with your workers. And then people just watch you and pity you for a few months. And finally reveal to you how much you are not blessing them by their absence in your meeting. You should miss koinonia and feel it. That's a sign that you are receiving something. That if for any reason, because of your busy schedule or travel or trip or whatever, you miss koinonia. There are thousands of people, close to 100,000 people, connecting from different parts of the world, online right now, listening to me as I'm speaking. Why? Some of them are unable to make it. That's a blessing. The moment our teaching is uploaded, online in 24 hours there's 1 million downloads 
in 24 hours. Transformation. Somebody somewhere is depending on that truth. Are we together now? I'd like you to pray just one prayer before I continue. And say, Lord, make my life valuable. Let me be a blessing. Open your mouth and pray, please. You brought me to the earth for a reason. Lord, I don't want to live a mediocre life. The dimension of diligence it will take. The dimension of consistency it will take to emerge triumphant grant me the grace go ahead and pray challenge laziness challenge unseriousness challenge mediocrity challenge playing around and wasting your time the labor dimension of a successful life the labor dimension of an impactful life you must cry for it from heaven I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live, I live, I live. I have no fear. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is ministering one more prayer point for me that we will pray. I'd like you to pray for the next one minute with all your heart and say, Lord, there is a faulty understanding in my life that is keeping me down, that is limiting the ministry of the Holy Spirit in my life. It may have come through culture. It may have come through my pain. I cry to the heavens. Give me a visitation. I declare my disloyalty to any mindset. I declare my disloyalty to any ideology, any thinking that is not consistent with the word of God. Any thinking that is not consistent with the ways of the kingdom. Any thought pattern that is not grounded and rooted upon the working knowledge of the word. No matter how long I have sustained that knowledge, lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. I may be Igbo, I may be Yoruba, I may be Hausa, I may be whatever nation, whatever locality around the world. I insist in the name of Jesus that my mind conforms to the patterns of the kingdom. There's so much the Holy Spirit wants to do in and through my life. Something about my life is the reason why I am poor. Something about my, my life, my mindset is the reason why the anointing cannot flow freely. There's a reason why my church is not growing. There's a reason why my life is grounded. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. No blaming parents, no blaming government, no blaming neighbors, no blaming anyone. I take full responsibility over my destiny and I declare my willingness to change. That as the word of God comes, I receive it. I don't argue with what works. Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. I say it all the time. This thing we are trying to get to has been, is a destination that someone is currently there. Your future is someone's present already. The dimension you seek to enter in the anointing, there is a living person on earth walking in it. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. I like this part of this song. That, that's the only part I'm interested in. We may be few who are serious about this. But the Bible says, I mean, Don Muen, really, not the Bible. It says we're surrounded. No, no. In fact, the Bible even says it. 
it says we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses witnesses men who have done it before they grew up from poor families and they caused them that you will not make it but they accessed a mystery and they rose beyond that dimension they went to school with no one to pay their school fees. Only a box. But a dimension of God bailed them out. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. He said, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. It's not new. You are not the first to do it. Women who were barren declared that they did not have womb. But they accessed a mystery in the kingdom that gave them womb. And they gave birth to twins and triplets. You are not the first. Don't mourn as if there's no hope. There is hope. But the hope is in a dimension of the word of God you catch. Not every part of the word of God is responsible for your answer. Your answer is somewhere. Your assignment is to search it out or listen to those who have searched it out. You don't argue when you don't yet have results. It's pride. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, you only criticize a man who you have done twice what he has not done once. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. For my life and destiny, our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. No matter what I'm going through today, Lord, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Sing it with faith in your heart. I look. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29 11. It says they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Surely he said there is an end and an expectation. Someone needs to prophesy this there is an end. This hunger will not be forever. I, I No, no. I may not have an anointing now but there is an end. There is a day I will access a deep fountain of grace. That the nations will see the hand of God upon my life. My child may not be making it now. But I tell you brothers and sisters there is an end. Prophesy it in one minute. I look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Pray. My hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. Lord, I look to Yahweh. My eyes are upon you, Jesus. They may criticize you, but fix your eyes on Jesus. They may not understand why you are this passionate. Fix your eyes, not on the mockers. Fix your eyes, not on the problem. Fix your eyes, not on the limitation. It says, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher. Come on, sing. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh, our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh, please sit down. This is already a word for someone tonight, even before we start. Though weeping endures for a night, my Bible, your Bible, says joy comes. Don't allow little hindrances on your part of greatness. Make it look as if God lied. You have been tithing, you've not seen anything. You've been praying, there's no grace that is at work. I tell you, something is happening in the realm of the spirit. He said, ye who have continued with me, one day it will be like a dream. You will come out of your house in the morning and step into a dimension that you will never, never, never recover from. Listen, sit down. Let me tell you a little story. 
Years ago, I used to go in the night. I tell you, I feel such a strong anointing. Strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's what happens when we begin to teach truth. He's called the spirit of truth. So he comes to pack the truth that you are receiving. Every time the truth comes, it comes like an arrow. It comes upon your spirit man. And then you receive it. Capacity is given to you to rise in the spirit. Listen, listen. Years ago, every night, I would just go and pray. Pray in the spirit for hours and study and return back. No anointing no nothing then there was no access to the privileges that people had are we together now that time if someone fell under the anointing you would take him to the hospital very few people understood the move of the spirit i would go and pray in tongues and sometimes two three hours prayer will turn into a vigil and i'll finish and carry my bible broke but in the spirit never understood the things of god but in the spirit. Controversial and mysterious, but in the spirit. And I continued there. And God told me, he said, son, one day, men will look at you and think you are a God. I remember God told me that thing. Just continue. Sometimes with no food, I had not eaten anything. Don't think I was born inside an aircraft. No, sir. He said, for we do not. Let me tell you one of the symbols of the apostolic ministry. God will pass you through almost every problem you are anointed to solve. That is the only way the anointing comes. An apostle is not an evangelist. No. That furnace of affliction, you must pass through it. Is, is what creates the scar. He said, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of Christ. Let no man trouble me. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Sing it one more time. Lord, we look to Yahweh. For the last time now. Hallelujah. Please sit down can pick something to write let's just discuss a few things so that we can pray when God is done with you brothers and sisters except you choose see listen look at me let me teach you something when you are being mentored and trained don't change the equation you are giving you will not be successful that way are you hearing what I'm saying don't tamper with the equation you are giving. Be foolish enough to walk with it and watch the wonder it will make out of your life. Jesus said the kingdom is for children because if you tell a child, jump. If a Jimmy tells his daughter, get up and fly down, she will do it without thinking. Sometimes this hour, this claim that we have grown is the reason why we never walk with God. The simplicity of spiritual things. There are so many people who want the anointing but will never sit down to learn how it comes. You tell them this is how it comes, they will change the equation somewhere and never get it. And stay forever not getting it. Lord Jesus, let this place remain a place of transformation. It will be wicked people if we gather your people here and waste their time and not bless them. Coming here alone is a sacrifice. You don't want to know how many spirits try to stop you to come for every meeting. That you can leave your house and come here is a sign that victory started, not that victory is starting. Sir, please stand up. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Yes. The 
Lord is healing you. You are sick. What's wrong with you? I'm seeing your legs. You stand a little and the legs, there's pain. Come. That devil will leave you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a man that the devil wants to inflict with paralysis, like complete stroke. Sir? Yes, it was on 1st January 9th. Hold on, please. Saturday, very early, I had to rise from the village back to where I'm staying. Started. Okay. Started. When was that? 1st January. That is Sunday 1st morning. January? Yes. That's when this happened? Yes. My God. I rushed from the village to, to Abuja. That's no. I'm seeing you go for a meeting in a village or something and while you were on your way I'm seeing something leaving you from there. This is where this came. It is, uh, we are going to look for a land. Somebody is taking the land. That's what I'm saying. saying. In a village. Yes. From there you went to Abuja. That's where the problem came from. Sir, this is not leg problem. This is witchcraft. You understand? No matter what kind of drug you take, you'll find out that it will not relieve you. I hope you're not embarrassed, sir. Well, I'm tired of the drugs. That's why I left Abuja yesterday for the here. You came from Abuja? Yes. Do you think you will go back the same? Do you think it's fair if you go back the same? No. Do you think I will be a good man of God if you go back the same? Well, you're a man of God, sir. Now, think about this. This man left Abuja and came. Now, we have, we, have, we have made all kinds of noise. We are men of God. You see the danger of not preparing? You come and stand and brag around and tell people you are hearing the voice of God. And here is someone left Abuja and came. Why should he not go to a herbalist if he cannot be healed? No, 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 no. I said it. If I were not a preacher, I would not go to a herbalist in the secret. I would go in the open and carry the charm and come for fellowship and sit down in front let a man of God look at me if you criticize me I say I agree I'm guilty but he, I hand over the charm to you hold it and heal me if you cannot shut your mouth you see that's why you need an encounter you don't talk like this without an encounter you will make a fool of yourself sir Jesus will heal you. This is called koinonia. Hold my hand, sir. My God. Jesus, I cause this now. Right now. Out! Just guide him. Out! I command in the name of Jesus. May the hand of the Lord touch you right now. Sir, look at me. Lift one leg. Go ahead. Lift it. Just look at me. Forget about the leg. Lift your leg. Are you feeling any pain there now? Huh? You're seeing improved? Yes. Right here. Look at this. Give Jesus praise. Come up. Walk. Come. <laughs> Lift it. Do what you couldn't do. Can you jump? Try. Look at this. In the name of Jesus, that anointing is upon you. Never be the same. Not only this, but the Lord is restoring your finances. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Are you together with that woman? I'm seeing life leaving you. That's your wife. Wife, come. Hallelujah. You have won. I'm looking at this woman in the spirit and I'm seeing a woman crying and saying, Lord, when will you visit us? Madam, please don't cry. Jesus is in this place. What is this? Praise the Reverend. You love
lost your child. Who is a reverend? My God. It's all right. The Lord is restoring this family. Believe me when I say this. Mama, don't cry. Jesus is Lord. Daddy, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, there is a grace and anointing in this place to wipe tears. It says to comfort they that mourn in Zion. There are people who are mourning, although they are in Zion. Comfort those that mourn in Zion. Is that not what the Bible says we should do? We declare comfort to you right now. Stretch your hands towards this dear family and pray in one minute. Koinonia, pray. We bring your challenge face to face with the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we bring it face to face with the anointing. The same God that has touched you now. The same God touching mommy. Touching all the children. Hallelujah. Sir, I prophesy to you that after today's meeting, from as early as tomorrow, write it down, you will begin to hear dramatic testimonies in your life. Listen, you see, listen, I don't have a prophetic office. My prophetic dimension is creative. I will not just reveal, it makes it happen. You see that? There is, there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic where you access what will happen and inform them so that you give them hope. But the creative dimension of God is your word is what makes it happen. So in the name of Jesus, whether or not that possibility was in your future, I put it there. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. Thank you. Stephen. Stephen. Who is Stephen? My God, this is what happens now. Stephen. I'm hearing a name, Stephen. Stephen. If that is your name, if you're inside or outside, Stephen, I just want to speak to that. Stephen. Your name is Stephen? My dad. My brother, look at me. God is taking the load on your head right now. I saw you coming in. I'm seeing load that is bigger than you. Why carry all this kind of load? Huh? Your life needs a real miracle. Almost everything about your life needs a miracle. And I'm going to pray for you. Look at me, um, gentleman. I have to pray for you because I'm seeing the devil wants to put sickness in your body. And I have to pray for you. The devil wants to put sickness in your body and I'll pray for you. Oh, hurry up. Sorry. I hope I'm not wasting your time. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing two ladies. The anointing of the Spirit will come on them and 19 days at a stretch. The families will have breakthroughs. 19 days at a stretch. That's what the Lord is revealing to me. 19 days. 19 days. 19 days at a stretch by the Spirit. Let it be according to the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. My brother, I want to pray for you. The Lord wants to take this load away from your life. You believe that? Yes. Hold my hands. Jesus, please, let your grace walk upon his life. I set you free right now. In the name of Jesus, sickness leaves your body. You have no business with infirmity. I curse it in your life. In the name of Jesus. My brother, God wants to help you, but 
and there is a lot of disorganization in your life. You need a lot of order. Huh? You need a lot of order in your life. God is helping you in the name of Jesus. I'm hearing the prayer of someone's mother in my ears. And that prayer will be answered now with the anointing touching that person. Right as I'm speaking now, the mother of that person is praying. God is giving you wisdom. A new dimension of wisdom. That's what God is giving you. Fresh wisdom. You need it for this season. The Lord is giving you wisdom. Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Can you just allow me flow as the Holy Spirit is flowing? Is that alright? Is that alright? So that you don't feel sometimes God, somebody at the back, the ushering stand, the power of God is touching that person right now. Someone right at the back, the ushering stand. And the Lord is saying it is over. This is the prophetic word. It is over. It is over. It is over. I'm prophesying to 11 people. The mountain that stands before you. The mountain that stands. 11 people. 11 people. No, no, as I speak, the power of God will confirm it. The mountain that stands before you. My God says I should tell you to be swallowed up. Swallowed up. Swallowed up. Swallowed up. Kaparato kata. I place the word of God upon this. The mountain that stands before you is swallowed up in the name of Jesus. The mountain that stands before you is swallowed up by the anointing of the Spirit. Pay attention when you receive from God and expect to testify. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is visiting someone in the worship team. I hear laughter, laughter, laughter. That's what I hear in my spirit, laughter. I place the word of God upon this, laughter. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. The Lord is ministering to me. Someone radical breakthrough and transformation. Is coming upon someone in the worship team. Laughter. That's what the Spirit of God is ministering to me. Ministering to me. Ministering to me. The lady standing near you. The anointing of the Spirit is upon her. It's a new chapter in your life. That's what the Spirit of God says. A new chapter in your life. New chapter in your life. The old is gone. The old is gone. The old is gone. The old is gone. Behold, I make all things new. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I'm seeing one of the usher ladies climbing a ladder in the spirit. I don't know who, but I'm seeing one of the ladies, you are an usher, climbing a ladder in the spirit. And the Lord says I should prophesy it. You are an usher. I know you are walking. But this miracle is for you. Climbing a ladder in the realm of the spirit. A curse. Marriage curse. Is being broken in two families. Two families specifically. Now. Is a curse. Is a curse. Is a cause Shabata Lakata Brata Sebeteke Lekataya. Break that cause, break that cause. There are two ladies here, one is outside. You've been having irregular menstruation. This is, this is a very dangerous situation. 
and the Lord is touching that person one is outside and the Lord is setting that person free now now from that devilish thing it must go now the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty Paul said and when I came to you I did not come with the excellency of speech people are tired of all these things people need real breakthroughs in their lives there is power in the name of Jesus there is power just speak to one more family and then we'll sit down. There is an Igbo lady or an Igbo family from Abia State. God is setting them free right now. I'm seeing it in the realm of the spirit. Abia State and the Lord is saying it's time for the captivity of that family to be rolled away. It's time for the captivity of that person. Lord, I don't know who that person is but I stretch my hands right now and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus from Abia that's what the Spirit of God is ministering to me. Lord, whether online, whether here, wherever it is, I pray that your power will break that family free from the shackles of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone following online from Joss. From Joss. You have an ear problem. And the Lord is setting you free right now. From Joss, you have an ear problem. In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Sit down. God bless you. A few minutes. Let's just touch on something tonight. Jesus. Please take something to write and um, let me just teach briefly. Our time is gone. I love it when the Holy Spirit steps in to do these things. Look at me. Do you know why many of us may never walk in these dimensions? The motif of our heart is to create an impression where people think this is an anointed man. If that is your motif, God will never trust you with this kind of power. You will destroy people with it. Are we together? Most people don't know that the anointing of the Spirit can kill the vessel carrying it. The anointing is like electricity. The same electricity that gives light can shock someone to death. Are we together now? When God anoints you, the standards become higher of his dealings with you. Someone can do something else and go scot-free. But for you, just because Moses was angry, God said you are not entering the promised land. Yet the people who grumbled entered. So be careful when you just say, give me an anointing. There, there are rules there is, there is a system with which you walk with this thing pride a lot of us here if God should trust us with this kind of grace people are in trouble especially when you enter a meeting where someone has doubted you for a long time you say let me let, he's, he's the one first let me release that anointing on the doubter I'm, I'm rubbish him then he will use that as a lesson and know that I am Apostle Joshua Selman and God says no way my, the death of my son is too expensive for that nonsense I hear the chains falling no I'm not singing I'm prophesying that's what I'm hearing you will see it happen now his word will never go for it don't mind me just allow me to do my madness I hear the chains falling Literally, I'm hearing physical chains. I hear the chains. I hear the chains. Lord, let them fall from the life. Of me. That's what the anointing was designed to do. Hallelujah. Please sit down. I want to teach you a very big secret tonight. Philippians chapter 2. The Lordship of Christ. 
Philippians chapter 2, the Lordship of Christ. Esther Yahi, the Lord is saying, I am helping you. I'm bringing you help. I'm bringing you help. Where your strength has failed, I am helping you. That's what the Lord is saying. What your parents could not do, I am helping you. I am helping you. Philippians chapter 2. The Lordship of Christ. What I want to teach you tonight is a very powerful secret. It's one of the mysteries that control walking in spiritual power. So I want you to pay attention to it. Hallelujah. Now, there are, there are different dimensions of God as revealed in scripture. Please follow me. Different dimensions of God as revealed in scripture. And when a believer comes to Jesus Christ, when you come to what we call surrender your heart to him, it is important for us to understand what dimension of God is revealed. Are we together now? Every dimension of Jesus in the Bible is responsible for certain outcomes of a believer's life. The names of God all through the Bible represent different dimensions of him that were encountered by different people. So when they met the God that provides, they called him Jairah. Are we together? When they met a God who could override people's wrongs, was merciful and compassionate, they called him Rapha or Rapheka. Are we together now? So the names of God defined the dimensions of his dealings and his operations with people. Now, when you come to Jesus, listen carefully. When you come to Jesus as a sinner, you hear an altar call or the spirit of God convicts you, right? The Bible says he will convict the, the world of three things, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the unbeliever, the ministry of conviction bringing him to a point where he will see his need. The dimension of God that is revealed at salvation is Jesus, our Savior. It is important you understand that. The saving dimension of Jesus, when you, when you preach Jesus as Savior, you reveal the love of God expressed to man through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Listen, listen. Hearing is the grace of God revealed. The Bible says that we are saved by that grace. Are we together now? So when you reveal Jesus as Savior, is the dimension of God revealed as Father, desiring to bring alienated sons and daughters who have been alienated, the Bible says, from the commonwealth of Israel. And he brings that through the substitutionary sacrifice the atoning sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus, our Savior. Dying on the cross for your sin and my sin to fulfill the law that says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Are we together now? So when you receive Jesus as Savior, and it's important, you know, many believers doubt their salvation. And the reason why they doubt their salvation is they do not know what the condition for a believer to be saved is. There's something they used to teach us called assurance of salvation. Assurance of salvation is not the same thing as salvation. Assurance of salvation is the basis upon which your salvation lies. So you know it and then you can know whether or not you are saved and in Christ. The Bible gives us very clear parameters to know that a person is saved. Are we together now? The Bible says, for instance, in Romans chapter 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the heavens and so on and so forth. He said, but the word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart, even the word of faith that we preach, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him, so, there are several things that must be believed by the believer. Those of us who are of the Anglican background, there's something that they call Anglican and I think parts of Catholic, uh, the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed is a compendium of the revelation of Jesus as Savior, chanted in a poem, right? 
So you say the things you believe that makes you a Christian. Right? So you start, I believe in God the Father and Jesus, his only son, so on and so forth. You know, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was dead and crucified, buried. He rose again on the third day, not the fourth day. It's important to believe exactly what the Bible says. There are people who believe Jesus rose up on the seventh day. You are wrong. You are still not saved. Jesus did not, because he, the spirit of truth cannot be administered with a lie. It has to be true. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. There are many things about the Christian faith that becomes a foundation. If you do not believe in the virgin birth, you are not a Christian. I look forward to times when I begin to write books. There are many truths that must be taught the body of Christ. The virgin birth of Jesus is important. The virgin birth of Jesus is the only basis that authenticates his divinity. That means that Mary had Jesus without the assistance of a man. Otherwise, he could not have been divine. So the virgin birth is not just proving that the lady who carried Jesus kept herself until Jesus came. It's more than that. It's more than that. You must believe that Jesus became a man and walked on the earth. The earthly ministry of Jesus is part of the basis because the Bible tells us he became a man. That is the only reason why you should believe that he's a high priest who has been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Are we together now? Yeah. You must believe in the fact that he was sinless. Now, this is the part people don't believe. If you don't believe that Jesus was sinless while he walked upon the earth, it's a terrible thing. There are all kinds of theologies going around saying, look, no, look, um, it, it's impossible. He was a man with flesh and blood. 100% man. It's important for us to... No, no, no. The Bible tells us and we trust the word of God. We were not there, but we believe in the integrity of the word. Because the Bible says, holy men wrote as they were moved of the spirit. And the spirit of God is the spirit of truth. Meaning he cannot lie. It's not that he does not lie. He cannot lie. Are we together? This is the confidence upon which our faith is grounded on. And you must believe he did not die on the road. Jesus did not die by car accident. How he died matters to your salvation. Right? The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How did that happen? For it is written, according to the Mosaic law, cursed is every man that hangs on the tree. The man who dies from starvation is not cursed. He just died. So if Jesus died without dying on the tree, he could not be a curse for man. Cost is he that hangeth on the tree, right? That the blessings of Abraham, what is the blessings of Abraham? Not car, not money, justification by faith. That's what the Bible calls the blessings of Abraham. The blessings of Abraham is different from the blessing. There are two different things. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. God preached the gospel to Abraham, right? That's what Apostle Peter taught us. And Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him for righteousness. So we, like faithful Abraham, partake of that blessing by giving an opportunity to believe God and receive that credit of righteousness. That's the blessing of Abraham. So that we're justified by faith and then it gives us access to receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians chapter 3 is what teaches us that. So it is important that we understand that Jesus as Savior talks about the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Now listen please, there is nothing that any man can do to be saved. No, 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 no. By, by that I mean there, there is no contribution. There is a participation, but there is no contribution. Your participation is to receive by faith. That's the only thing. But you do not have a contribution when Jesus is revealed as Savior. The moment Jesus is revealed as Savior, he, the love of God is revealed unassisted. Unassisted. The substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. That's the apex of the demonstration of the love and the grace of God. Behold what manner of love the Bible says the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called. That's the process. Are we together? Are you following me now? I'm taking our time to give us this basis so that it will strengthen our understanding. There is no man, there is no good works of any man that can be the basis upon which your salvation... No, 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 it's, it's impossible. 
I cannot be saved on the grounds of my works. I cannot be saved on grounds of things that I have done. No. Every time you look up to what you have done to be saved, you are out of the grace of God. But the moment you are saved, not walking the works of kingdom is the abuse of that grace. You see it now. Before you are saved, you only receive. After you are saved, you are empowered. The dimension of grace upon you no longer just becomes receiving. It becomes an empowerment to do. I must walk the works of him that sent me. Now, this is the balance we must bring over the grace message. There are two dimensions. There is the grace that appears as God's mercy given to man simply because of our helplessness to be able to attain that position of righteousness. The very nature of God. But now, having obtained that righteousness, we are further empowered by the ministry of the Spirit to begin to produce what the Bible calls the fruits of righteousness. Are we together? But that's not where I'm going tonight. There is a dimension of Jesus Christ that many people have not come into terms with. It has not been a revelation to them. And that's why they don't walk in power. That's why they cannot walk in certain dimensions. It's called the Lordship of Christ. It's one of the, it's one of the, the pillars of the Christian faith. You cannot claim you are a Christian and not acknowledge the Lordship of Christ. Philippians chapter 2, please, from verse 5. Let this mind, he says, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So the word mind there means an understanding. There is an understanding that must be in you. Next verse says, though, who, although, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. 7 says, but he made himself of no reputation, and he took upon himself the form of a servant and was in the likeness of men. Eight, and being found in the fashion of man he humbled himself you see that follow the progression and was obedient unto death mark that obedient unto death obedient even to the point of death obedient with no resistance we are studying the servanthood of jesus now the hallmark of his servanthood was what obedience that costed him his life right then he says even death on the cross verse 9 wherefore on the strength of his obedience unto death although being God God had so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name next verse he says that at the name of Jesus not necessarily the mention of it it's not the mention of it that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and of things under the earth verse 11 and every tongue should confess that jesus christ is what the name that was given to him we have discussed this in koinonia the name is not jesus i hope you know this the name that was given to him is not jesus jesus was the name his mother gave him when they gave birth to him correct Christ was the name he assumed when he became full of the spirit. But Lord was conferred upon him. That's the name. The name is not Jesus. The name is Lord. That confessed that Jesus who became the Christ in his earthly work is now Lord. Are you seeing that now? To the glory of God the Father. So, the Lordship of Christ is very important. Write this down, please. There are a number of Hebrew words that are translated Lord. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to play around with Hebrew and Greek words, but just a few of them. There is Jehovah, right? Jehovah is translated Lord in capital letter. It was his name revealed to, to the Jews as the God of the Hebrews. But there is Adon, from where we get the word Adonai right is translated lord lord the greek word is curious don't 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 worry i'm just giving you a theological background of the word lord and what that means is sovereign controller listen please it means master it means owner but it also means sovereign controller it gives you a picture of one who either by his own strength 
or by your permission has unrestrained access to everything about your life. Are you getting the idea now? Either by his own strength, so I can come into someone's house and push the door by my strength. With respect to that combat, I am Lord because I push the door. Are we together? Or the person can open the door and welcome me. I am still Lord. So when the Bible gives the idea of Lordship, it talks of ownership, it talks of sovereign power, it talks of dominion, but it also talks of unrestrained access. Are we together? So Jesus being Lord is a revelation of one who has absolute control. This dimension of the Lordship of Jesus has not been experienced in many believers. Listen, did you know that you can have a revelation of Jesus as Savior and yet not have a revelation of Him as Lord? When you have a revelation of Jesus as Lord, it will change everything in your life as we are going to see shortly. The Lordship of Jesus is the dominion of His person over every aspect of your life. And there is a law in the realm of the spirit. Your degree of submission to authority is your degree of dominion. Listen, listen. The centurion came to Jesus. And he said, you know, this and that. My son is ill. And please, I want, you know. Jesus said, okay, you are a captain in the army. Let me respect you and come to your house. And he shocked Jesus with a revelation. He said, no, 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 no. You don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only. For I am a man under authority the authority of the roman government so my strength comes with my submission to that authority and because i am under authority i tell one go and he must go come and he must come so he said jesus i know that you are not here by yourself you too you are under an authority and jesus said i have not found such faith such understanding that a man knows the relationship between submission and power in fact, here's how Apostle James puts it. He says, submit yourself to the mighty hand of God. Then, he says, resist the devil and he will. He will not flee because of your ability to resist him. He will flee because of the authority that backs you while you are resisting. So your own power is derived from your authority. Is the Greek word exousia. The capacity to legislate on behalf of one on the strength of your co your connection are we together now the best description of that ability is marriage so if a man is married with his wife if the man is not around the wife can safely if he's a responsible man the wife can safely act in the stead of the man is that true yeah so jesus gives his bride the church the unrestrained ability to demonstrate the reality of his person on earth but there is a condition the condition is that like a faithful woman only becomes a faithful woman on the strength of her submission to her husband is that not true the bible says wives do what submit yourselves so the church that is now the wife of the lord jesus the bride of christ derives her power by submitting the revelation of the lordship of jesus is why demons eat up people cheaply. Why principalities and powers destroy people. Because when they come, they see that you have believed in the substitutionary power of Jesus. But you have not believed in his life gaining dominance over you. Write this down. The dominion of the word in us is the clearest measure of the lordship of Christ in you. The dominion of the word of God. Dominion means the degree to which your life is a reflection of obedience to the word. The dominion of the word in us is the clearest measure of the lordship of Christ. So if you say Jesus is lord of my life, all I need to do is to see to what degree your life confirms to the word. And then I know whether or not he is lord over your life. Because that Jesus we speak about is the living logos. John 1 verse 1. The word of God. Jesus gave us a mysterious statement. Say, how can you believe 
God whom you have not seen when you cannot believe your brother. So if you cannot believe the word of God written, you'll be a liar to claim you believe God. The Bible already said that God you believe inspired men to write this. If you do not believe scripture, then it means you are not a believer. Listen, the dominion, by dominion, the unrestrained access that you have given the word of God to find expression in your life is the clearest measure. Look at me. Jesus being Lord in our lives is not something that is just, it's not a lip service. Your life must demonstrate that death. Your life must demonstrate it. There are two standards that demonstrate that Jesus is Lord over our lives. Write it down quickly. Number one is surrender. Your degree of surrender. If Jesus is Lord of your life, let me see it by how much of surrender how much you are willing to decrease that he will increase not how much you are willing to pray in tongues not how much you are willing to preach no not how much you are willing to climb scriptures surrender this is where many believers in the church are shortchanged and greatly cheated the difficulty to surrender everything king of my life you are my all and I live for you alone you're the king of my life you have my all and I lay my life greater love had no man than this than a man laid down the degree to which you have surrendered your finances the degree to which you have surrendered your emotions. Look up, please. You can be born again. You have given God your heart, but you have not given God your money. He's not Lord of your life. You have given God your, your heart, but you have not given God your intellect. You see, the area Satan attacks in your life is the area that the Lordship of Jesus has not yet covered. That becomes his place his point of attack in a man's life. When Satan comes into your life, he can't just attack you anyhow. He keeps searching. He does it by trial and error. So he looks at your giving life. He looks at your obedience and he knows that Jesus is not yet Lord here. He looks at your ego and he knows that you can give every other thing but your reputation. And then his attack comes from the dimension of your reputation. Jesus is truly Lord in your life when you are completely surrendered. Everything it, it is a theme in this ministry how that you must surrender everything to God. It's called death. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ, the Bible says. Nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I, but the life that I now live in the flesh, that is the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Right? Who loved me and gave himself for me. It's a realm called Galatians 2.20. Brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whatever, hold on, let me press a point. Whatever in your life you cannot give God is the idol in your life. And that's what Satan will use to kill you. There are many people, it's relationships and association. You can give God everything but friends. Are we together? Yeah. Everything but friends. Everything but your education. Oh, I'm brilliant, you know. I have a master's in this. I have a PhD in this and that and that. I'm an intellectual. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm this and that and that. I, I have 12 masters. And I mean, you have to respect that. And the devil says, that's right. He will use it and destroy your life. Everything you don't hand over to God cannot be trusted to bless you. Whatever it is. In the kingdom, things only bless us to the degree we've handed them over to God. So the test of lordship was best demonstrated in the life of the patriarch Abraham. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. The Bible says how that God tested Abraham. And he says, Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Right? And he says, and it came to pass after these things that God did test or tempt Abraham. He, God was trying to get to bless Abraham. But he knew that Abraham must be tested. That lordship test. 
take thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee to the land of Moriah, and offer him for a bond offering. Abraham, come promise. Abraham wakes up in the morning to a prophetic instruction. After waiting for over 25 years to have a child, please pay attention. And then the Lord tells him, carry this child. Don't discuss with your wife. Go and kill him. And then the Bible says, Abraham arose early. Everybody say obedience. Unto death. Say it, obedience. Unto death. And he held his son. Do you know what that means? Gathered the servants and said, look, we have to go and offer sacrifices unto God. And Abraham was thinking in his heart, my future. The son of every man represents his future. The one who continues the name. And he says, Abraham, destroy your future. Can you give up your future to prove that you love me? <sighs> Abraham said, this is hard, but I will do it. You see, every time I teach about surrender, it does me something. Because it's something that has happened in my own life. It's a circumcision that only when you have given up, everything. Master, we have left all to follow you. Left all to follow you. And he took Abraham. He took Isaac. When he got to the base of the mountain, he knew that the servants would think he has run mad and would stop him. And he said, you people should wait. He started climbing the mountain with his own son. Only son. His future. The son of promise. Waited more than 25 years. And the son Isaac started getting concerned. And he said, Father, I see the wood. I see the fire. Of course, he saw the knife too. Where is the sacrifice? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. In his heart, he was saying, Son, before your arrival, there was one whom I loved. And not even my love for you can compete. My God. That is the realm of men and women who will walk in power. Who can give God anything, including their lives. He tied Isaac. You can imagine Isaac begging his father and saying, Father, please, if I offended you, forgive me. And he said, no, no, it's not about offense. It's about the Lordship. And God was seeing a foreshadow of what only him could do. Do you know people could not give their children easily like that? God was about to give his only son. And here he was seeing a mortal man. And Abraham carried Isaac and dropped Isaac. The angels were wondering, asking questions. And saying, I hope this guy is correct. His future is about to be jeopardized. He lifted the knife. Romans chapter 4. The Bible says that Abraham already planned, paraphrasing, that when he killed Isaac, he would beg God to bring Isaac back to life. In other words, God, I've obeyed you. Now my son is dead. Please bring him back to life. And when he lifted up the knife, God said, stop, Abraham, for now I know. Not when you left your house. Now, now I know that thou fearest me, seeing that you did not withhold your son from me. Here comes a blessing. Now I swear by my name, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying. Listen, many people claim the blessings of Abraham. The Jews wanted to do that. And they said, we are the sons of Abraham. And he said, if you are the sons of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. The works of, of Abraham is loyalty and obedience unto death. That's how you get the blessings of Abraham. It's not by chanting and quoting. Uh -uh. You are not qualified when you cannot submit and surrender everything. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if it is God you are working with, he will demand everything from you. Everything. Just listen to what I'm telling you. He will demand everything. Everything means he must probe it until it comes under his lordship. Just when you love this brother, you cannot sleep because of him. Then God comes to you in the night and says, my daughter, you have been saying you love me so much. But I'm asking you a question. Can you leave this guy? He didn't say leave him. It's just a question. 
and he said no this, this has to be a demon i'm 32 i need to marry by march what kind of lack of breakthrough is this apostle prophesied miracle service that i must marry and now one spirit and you reject and cast when you finish god says are you done answer my question the still small voice can you leave the brother and just when you're about to think his call comes and he sends a text thank god for the gift of him in my life and say god i reject this I, I reject this don't play with my heart and god says that's the idol in your heart if you cannot lay him aside you finish with your salary and you are happy you want to go and buy trousers and shirt and god says carry all that money join it to whatever else you have in your account and just when they sent you money from abroad and says carry it and go and say say god abba you are joking even you you know i won't do it there's no point asking me you already know i would not obey you because it can't be you you are a good god you don't punish people like that you see how we use scriptures and then god looks at you whereas his plan was that by that act of obedience he will bless you do you know there are times god has told me please i'm not saying you should bring money to me after the service that's not what i'm saying get me correct so you don't think i'm using someone to manipulate you you know i'm blessed listen do you know that there are times god has spoken to me that he was going to test certain people and he would give them instructions to empty their accounts for instance and carry the money and come and give now, God did not tell me their faces, but God told me that when they come, I should not collect it. I should only bless it and give them back. And you see the people dragging themselves. They stand like prisoners who just came out. I mean, they, they can't believe it. They are surprised that they are obeying because they are not supposed to obey that kind of instruction. Obedience unto death. While you are laughing, I hope you get what I'm saying. The implications of the Lordship of Christ and then they come and stand and sometimes it's not like i pray on the money and give them immediately i just bless it and i said all right um the lord will honor you and they live sad you know something you know that something died god is this you i did this did they charm me and after three days i called them and i said this is what the lord has said i should bless no 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 apostle and i said no and within one week their lives change to another dimension. When you pass the Lordship test, no charm, believe me, no principality, no enchantment will survive you because you are under an authority that is committed to defending you. Hallelujah. One time I heard, I think one of our people here was stranded somewhere and the person called me, he was a worker. And he called me and he said, I'm a worker in Koinonia. I'm stranded here and there and there. And when I verified that the story was true, I said immediately, we'll try to get resources to you immediately. Why? Because the fact that that person identified as a worker and we know that the person is a faithful worker puts pressure on my integrity to defend the person. Are we together now? Yeah. That's why God does not show up and defend many of us. Some of you will go for a meeting now and say there is a lady wearing yellow. Whether you see her or not, the power of God will touch you and everybody is watching and say, ah, apostle must be carrying a charm. It's not that easy. It's lordship. The key is lordship that I may decrease so that he, Christ, will increase. Have you laid down your Isaac? Everybody please look at me carefully. Don't say yes laying down your Isaac is do you know there are certain Isaacs you cannot lay down you can only give God permission to carry them you don't have the strength to lay it down Koinonia is quiet tonight because you suspect God will do something about this message I assure you he will don't, don't even try to he will right away the God I serve. There are prayers that you don't pray twice to answer. Let me tell you the kind of prayer God answers once. Lord, have your way. Ah, music to the ears of the Lord. Have your way. That's exactly because he really will have his way. But you see, you must trust him to know he will not destroy you. Look what he made out of our lives. I will worship him forever. Love him forever because this God is too 
There are some of you, you claim Jesus is Lord. And the Lord just tells you, take one of your shoes out of the ten you have. Just take one shoe and you say, no, 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 God, you can't do this. You, he's not Lord. Brothers and sisters, you will never be blessed that way. As a man of God, there are times they will invite you somewhere. And you have all kinds of honorariums waiting. And then another small gathering somewhere and God will say, that's the one. The gathering where you are the one who will support them after the meeting. You finish and say, I'm aware you guys don't have bike money. Take 1,000. And God says, that's the one you go to. Let me show you why many people never walk in power. The secret of power is the revelation of the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus submitted, obeyed unto death. Wherefore, God so highly exalted him. Submit your finances to the principles of God and see the wonder you will make out of your life. Submit your emotions to the control of Jesus and see what he will do with you. Submit your gift and talent. Carry all your certificates and kneel down before him and say, Lord, you are the reason why I have this masters. I put it before you. What do you want me to do with it? And God says, that's all. Somebody will stop sleeping in NMPC. It does, I don't care whether you read whatever. God will wake somebody and say, bless my child because he has now put me in control of that certificate. You can carry it on your own and move around looking for a job. And somebody will say, are you, are you with masters? Ask you, can you manage gate man? You say, about me? Because you are the one looking for it. But when you surrender it, surrender is powerful. I don't know how to tell you this thing. It's something I've done. Oh, listen. This man you are seeing standing before you can give God anything. Ask God. Ask him. Money, ah, that one is not even, I don't have to be a Christian to do that one. Years ago, the Lord asked me a question and said, can you give me your life? And I told him no. I honestly thought about it and I said, I can't give him my life. I can give you my heart to be persecuted. I can give you my ears to hear nonsense from critics, but I'm not sure I can give you my life. Because I was sincere, and the Lord did something for me. Believe me, like Paul, for me now, Joshua Selman, to live is Christ, to die is gain. God uses a business terminology for, for death. I wouldn't die, you, you try to kill me, you are wasting your time. You don't know how many times they've tried to kill me. But now, it's not for fear. I need to be alive to do many serious things for the kingdom. So it's not just fear. Oh, accident. Ask my people what happens when we are traveling. There was a time I think we were going to Lagos or so. Or we're, I think we were coming from Ibadan. The plane was shaking as if somebody was doing high jump on it. Everybody, you know, first people start being uncomfortable. Everybody just greets their neighbor. I hope you're okay. And then later on, people want to on phone and snap so that whatever happens ask them I, will, I sleep all through do you know the mysteries that surround my life to die yeah, yeah. Paul died immediately the people left he resurrected himself and said let's, let's continue don't mind these lousy people when he was done he said I'm ready to be poured out as a drink offering I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up are you blessed many people reject death out of fear not the confidence of what their submission to God has brought please koinonia don't trivialize what I'm telling you if you want to see power and triumph you want to see battles being fought for you come under the authority of the Lord Jesus and see what will happen what will it cost you hold on it will cost you only one thing your ambitions yourself your will your will is the price to pay for Jesus to be Lord your will, your will, self, I want it my way. It must be my way. I want to live in Abuja by myself. God says, go to Zampara. He says, I cast that spirit, Zampara, where? I'm, I, I, the Bible says, a land flowing with milk and honey. And you go to Abuja and live like an armed robber there, hopping from place to place because the hand of God is not there. Are we together? 
now. To sacrifice your will is one of the hardest things for a believer to do. Thy will be done in my life. Thy will be done in my life. Lord, thy will be done in my life. This is how Christians walk. We come to God with our desires and then we arrange scriptures that will force him to have to give us our desires and we are afraid of telling him nevertheless Lord this is my desire but what is your opinion we don't want it when you can say nevertheless Jesus is Lord of your life Lord I want to buy this house but nevertheless I die to my will Koinonia please hear me I bring you to a place of power tonight when everything about your life revolves around the purposes of the kingdom, where he becomes Lord over your life. Are we together? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So, when you have your ambitions, this is how I want my life to be. This is how I want my ways to be. And God says, whatever it is, this is my plan for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you, you, a future. You have trusted people who don't have guarantee over your life. Why not hand everything over to him? Take now thy only son, whom thou lovest, and offer him as a bond offering. Your journey to power is a dream until you can sacrifice all to him. Not sacrifice some. Not sacrifice the most important ones. Everything. That you get to a point today where if God says empty your, your bank account, yes sir. You get to a point where God says sow your car or your house, yes sir. Many carnal people will insult you and call you stupid. Where God sits down and God says look promise. I want you to get up now and go to Togo. Your life from March starts in Togo. Go and stay there. For as long as it is him, when you have lost the ability to tell God, no, he is Lord of your life. That's when you will see the power of God. That's when you will speak and have him back you. Not just because somebody laid hands on you. You know, you've heard me say it in Koinonia many times. Hold on. That so many people, I'm sure some of you are waiting now after service to see me. And as soon as you see me, you want to hold my shoe. It's not there. The power is not in the shoe. You can carry it and go with it. It's not in the shoe. The power is not even in my hands coming on you. The power is in a posture in the realm of the spirit. A posture of complete surrender. The day I stop that, I will never see that power in my life again. Are we together? Jesus, be Lord of my life. Don't just say, I, I, Lord, I know you too. You know you are Lord. You say, I don't, I don't know. If you say, I am Lord, I am watching. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And will not do, do. Obedience, obedience, obedience. This is where greed comes from. This is where selfishness comes from. This is why many people are poor. It's not because they are not business people. It's not because of this and that, all kinds of things. You know, people read all kinds of business books. Listen, let me tell you something. You know that Koinonia is full of entrepreneurs here and there. There are millionaires in this place. Silent millionaires just sitting looking around. They are very blessed people in this place. But I can tell you this. Much more than business acumen or whatever it is. If God cannot get your heart, you are a joker as far as impact in the kingdom is concerned. So if God has declared for us as a family of faith that this is our year of trial, then we must get to a point in our lives where all, everybody say all. Say it, say all. All. You have surrendered your will to the extent that if God looks at you and says no marriage, you say, Kai, God, this is painful, oh, but your will be done. I just said marriage someone. I mean, I felt the shock. It just entered some of us. I, 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 I rebuked that one. That apostle, you are going too far. Just. Abba.
John, you have everything in this ministry. There is no instruction you will give us that we will not do. You ask the leaders. There is nothing God says to be done that will not be done. If God says empty all the ministry, account, savings, reserves, anything. Monday morning is me that will supervise it. It will go. You can publish it in the newspaper and say, look, stupid men of God are here again. No problem. Let the stupidity yield results. We are too carnal. That's why we don't see the power of God. There's too much carnality. Sensually driven. Driven by intellect. Oh, you know, if you add A plus B, we are intelligent beings. C plus. No, 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 no. When you come to the kingdom, the word of God is your modus operandi. You have to live by it. Find out what happened to the lives of people who obeyed God in scripture. Mad instructions, but they obeyed. And God vindicated them and blessed them. Koinonia, please hear me. You must rise to a point in the name of Jesus Christ where nothing becomes too much for you to give him. I'm showing you where the devil is destroying you. Do you know why many people are poor? Because they have not handed the affairs of their finances to God. Believe me, recession is biting people, lashing out on people. And the simple reason is they have not handed over their finances to God. You believe your survival comes through your job, so it will punish you. You believe your survival comes through your uncle. So the day you try to call your uncle and he does not pick, he said, no, nothing will kill my uncle. He has to remain alive to take care of me. You are trusting in man. Woe unto any man who puts his strength in a man. You believe what I'm telling you? This is how the Lord trained me. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord said to me. It's a promise. And he's kept it. He's kept it. Everything God gives me is not a problem for him because he knows that it belongs to him. Can God give you something and take it back? You know, it's like our little ones here. You can give them something now. They will collect and you say, give me back and they will refuse. That's how many of us are. Oh God, give me divine help. And then he says, all right, can you use it for my house? I say, no, oh God, now that I'm, I'm in. Uh. Esther used her beauty for the glory. When he became Lord over her beauty, she became queen. Everything Jesus becomes Lord over prospers. Whatever he is not Lord over suffers. It's a law. Everything Jesus is allowed to become Lord over prospers. To be Lord is not just to declare and say Lord. Uh -uh. To be Lord means you are willing to abide by his terms over that affairs. So over your finances, when you say Jesus is Lord, what you are saying is, as far as kingdom finance is concerned, I am ready to live by all the principles. So you tithe in a delight some way. When you carry your tithe to the house of God, you don't frown as if you are going to bribe God. Jesus, I thank you for the privilege of bringing a tenth. When you are sowing a seed, when you are giving, you are knowing that I'm opening the floodgates of heaven. And Lord, I thank you. Not that you are saying, God, this money I'm giving, if no return comes, uh-uh. He is Lord. Whether he blesses me or not, believe me, I cannot accuse him. What will be the accusation? What will be the accusation? That God is not faithful? If I die of sickness today, the last word that will come out of my mouth is, Lord, you are the healer. And then I'll rest. Society, listen, is full of people with high blood pressure. Do you know what causes high blood pressure? Ask the doctors, they will tell you. Because you are in charge of your own world. And there is pressure to make it work. I have to pay the school fees of my child. What will people say if I cannot pay it? And so you go around putting yourself in trouble. No, no, I am, I am 40 years at my age. I should have a car. So I have to get a car. I have to hustle around. And so you are trying and somebody will dupe you and you will come back and almost high blood pressure. No, no, no. People cannot say I'm buried. I've been married for five years. Small, small boys and girls are now giving birth. Me, that I'm like their mother, I will do anything. And you go and meet a herbalist and you land in trouble. You see how the lack
lack of surrender to God is the reason for stress. I've preached this again and again and I will repeat it. Brothers and sisters, there is a place in Christ where men can be free. I bring you to the place of freedom where you hand over everything about your life and rest. You are carrying a load that is too much for you. This year, I must build a house. Whether the devil likes it or not, a good plan. But you are now trying to do it by the strength of the flesh. You now go and borrow money from the bank. As soon as you borrow money from the bank, they now steal it. You are in trouble. No house, no money. High blood pressure starts. And then the devil says, okay, let me do. Go and borrow another one. You get into trouble. By August, you are almost dying. You can't get up in the morning and breathe well. You see someone of 27 looking like, like 59. You ask him what is happening in Nigeria. No, it's not Nigeria. It is your understanding. Because there are still happy people in this country. Is God speaking to us? There are many students under pressure. I must get a job by myself. I must work service. I'm, no, 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 no. See, I want you to be... Look, trust God's responsibility over your life. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. If God does not give you a wife, you can't marry. Well, you can marry, but what you will be responsible for whoever and whatever you marry. If except the Lord builds the house. If God does not give you a job, you can lobby your way and get a job that will punish you. Your joy lives from the day you get that job. It's only God that can give you a ministry. You can organize people who will steal from you, criticize you. They are the ones who will pay people in the newspaper to say, let's confess. One day we went to the back of one fence and he rubbed one oil on my face. The same people. I trust in him. I've handed my entire life to him. Such a realm of freedom. You put pressure on his integrity through your obedience. Lord, I obey you. If nothing happens, I said it in one of the meetings in Koinonia. Never claim to be giving God the glory when you are the one taking the shame. Never claim to be giving God the glory when you are the one taking the shame. We live in a society where we are so shame conscious. Ah, look at the shame they have brought to me. That's why you will suffer for nothing. Shame, that word is a, is a word that you hear being used everywhere. Let them not say I'm not rich. Ah, sh I don't want shame. So you go and borrow money and buy bottles of minerals. And then from there, the person says, look, the next day, I won't talk to you again. I'm coming to come and carry my bottles in the presence of your visitors. Leave everything to God. Tonight, we are going to do a handover ceremony. Not from one power to the other. Hand over of your life and destiny and say, Lord, this load is killing me. I can't sleep. God designed sleep. There are many of us here, we've not slept for days. It's not just demon spirits. Stress. Stress. You see a pastor of 100 members not sleeping. You ask him where he said, where will we get generator by Sunday? Mr. Man, you didn't call yourself. Calm down. Five minutes in the presence of God. God will get up and speak to someone. You want to borrow gen, God will bl bl instruct somebody to buy it and give you. These are my contemplations. Please, I don't want you to take what I'm saying lightly. The secret to the power of God upon my life, aside from my love for him, is my total surrender of my will and everything in my life. I have pleaded with God, crying in the secret place, that whatever is in my life that I cannot give God, I've begged him to never give me. It is the favor I have pleaded with God to do for me. That Lord, if there is anything in my life that I will not be able to hand over to you, may it never come. That's the way of saving me. Finances, ministry prestige, anointing, titles, reputation, influence. What is it that you cannot give God? It's the reason why the devil will destroy you. Brothers, you will hand over everything. There are many gentlemen now. There are predominantly young people here. And many brothers are out to take this year of triumph and make sure they are established. They want to force this door to open. No, you use keys. You don't use force. No, I'm 
must start earning. I'm not a small boy again. I'm, I'll be hearing this message. I must put it to work. You're about to put yourself in big trouble. I hand over my life to you. Jesus, if you don't help me, no one can help me. I will obey you and declare your lordship by allowing the word of God to dominate in me. If you have said that tithing brings favor, I will tithe and nothing will stop me. If praising you is the secret to breakthrough, I will praise you like a madman. That's his lordship over the life. Everything you believe the word of God can give you, have you applied it? Jesus is not Lord. I told you the, the, the dominion of the word in your life and the freedom with which you give the principles of the kingdom to find expression in you is the measure of the lordship of Christ in your life. I've come tonight to bring a very, very simple but profound secret to you. Koinonia, make Jesus Lord of your life experientially, not by talk. Hand over your house to him and see whether you will beg for food. Hand over your children to him and see whether he cannot pay their school fees. Hand over your education and see whether they will drive you out of the university because there's no school fees. He says, come on to me, all ye that labor. Hand over your intention to build a house to him and watch somebody build a house and bring the, the, the key and give it to you. You have been trying to buy a car of 1.5 million. It's almost killing you. You raise 700,000, the devourer eats it. You raise 500,000, the devourer eats it. Why not go to God and say, Lord, there is a way this thing is done. I come to you. I come to you. Help me. And the Lord will tell you A, B, C, D. And you want a car of 1 million, God will give you a car of 10 million. And people will look at you and say, you are a thief. No, you are not a thief. He is Lord of my life. When he's Lord of your life, he takes care of you. By God's grace, I have a few people that I take care of, like my children, and I am ever faithful to their life. Their school fees, their well-being, it is my responsibility as a father figure over their life to take care of them. And I make sure, whether they deserve it or not, I give them. Not necessarily just because I love them alone. It's a show of responsibility. So when you hand over everything to God, he will pay your bills. You hand over everything to God, he will put laughter in your face. You hand over everything from, to God, he will shield you from recession. There are people already, this February, they have received rewards that even if they got by December, they will be happy. Already, because they handed everything over to God. I've handed Koinonia and I do that to him all the time. When I'm preparing for every service, I say, Lord Jesus, I am before you. I'm a small child before you. There are people listening, thousands of people waiting to be blessed all over the world. And Lord, I'm asking that you only use me. Speak through me. And I carry that sincere heart and come before him. And the results are remarkable. Results that not even me myself can account for. This is the key to ease in life. Surrender all. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, I'm withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I'm withholding nothing, sing it, I surrender all, I surrender all, hand over the ministry and rest. Hand over the business and rest. Hand over the children's school fees. Hand over your business and rest. Withholding nothing. Sing it one more time to him. Hand over the relationship and rest. Hand over the marriage and rest. Hand over the projects and rest. Hand over your desire for the anointing. Rest, rest, rest. Will you give your life away? That's what he's asking you tonight, Koinonia. Will you give your life away? So it's your turn to respond to him now.
Lord, I give myself away. Apostle, you don't understand. If I don't pay the rent by tomorrow, they are going to drive me. If God wakes that landlord from sleep, that's only when he can come to you. The landlord will sleep for eight hours. What guarantee does he have that he will wake up? Brothers and sisters, listen. I want you to trust God. The carnality has killed unbelief from believers. I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Whatever God cannot give me cannot be given by any man. No matter who deceives you. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. He said, but we will trust in the name of our God. Hallelujah. Get to a point of reckless abandon. You hand over everything and say, Lord, I'm tired of sleepless nights. You are not the first God has called into ministry. Lord, what if people don't come for this program? My reputation is at stake. Uh -uh, uh -uh. You are the one who called yourself. Lord, what if I don't make it? People would think I'm not successful. Yourself, your flesh, your ego is the very reason you will never step into it. I show you the mystery of ease submission to the lordship of christ jesus submitted himself philippians 2 5 obedient unto death when there is nothing else to withhold from him then he will give you everything everything Kai. everything everything this god can surprise men have you not read it in your bible listen listen you know i have watched and, and let me say this with all humility I have watched the way God is raising mighty people in this ministry, especially in the area of finances. In the last three or four months, I have been shocked at how many millionaires God has produced in this ministry. Raising, I'm talking of ordinary people, not just people who have any necessary acumen, because he found men who can say, Lord, everything that you have, everything I have belongs to you. Trust me, let me be your treasurer. The last treasurer betrayed you. Let me be another one. Trust me. And God says, you are doing this for me? There are people entering unbelievable dimensions of the anointing. You know why? Because they have said, Lord, bless me. It's not about myself. It's for your glory. Bless me. I surrender my crowns. Men may clap for me, but I consciously take those crowns and drop them. Every time, especially after the miracle service, no matter how late, when I go home, after everyone has gone and left me alone, I never lie down and sleep. I have my little chair that is like my altar. I just kneel down and I say, I kneel to the doer of these wonders. People are in their houses discussing me and say, my God, what a great man. And I kneel down. Sometimes people pile all kinds of seats. There are all kinds of envelopes. And I just drop all of them on the ground. I said, Lord, this belongs to you. They gave the wrong person, but please make it right because I hand it over to you. It belongs to you. And God says, you do this for me, ready for the next level. Some of us have stayed in one level of the anointing forever. You are anointed, but there is no growth because that is the level God has seen that he will be glorified. When he takes you to another level, you become Lord of yourself. We are going to pray. I told you it's a handover service tonight. Lay down your burdens. It's killing you. Lay down your burdens. It's killing you. What you are praying for, somebody got it today as a testimony. Why not you? Please listen to what I'm telling you. And you will watch God bless you. It's the antidote to recession. You will get up and move around. You are sleeping. God will wake somebody else and say, have you considered my servant promise? I want you not just to bless him one time, but so, so, so amount from your salary goes to him for as long as I bless you. And he's minding himself. This is the mystery some of us walk in that people just look at our lives and say, how are these people doing it? It's the mystery of death to allow him be Lord. The believer's identity 
we teach our students in the school of ministry that when we are exploring the identity of the believer the first thing you have to consider and you may want to write is your positional advantage please write that down positional advantage oh hallelujah let this be a revelation to someone your positional advantage what does that mean your positional advantage reveals to you your status and your ranking in the spirit on account of this victorious sacrifice of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 7. This is the revelation that demons do not want the saints to have. This is the revelation that infirmity and all kinds of satanic things, when you do not have this revelation believe me no matter what else you know you will be a victim of the vicissitudes of life but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us five even when we were dead in sins had quickened us together with Christ say together with Christ please shout it say together with Christ by grace are ye saved. Verse 6 now. It says, and had raised Joshua Selman up together. It's not that Jesus, as he was ascending, a mystery was happening that none of these princes knew. He had raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places. This is your spiritual location right now. In heavenly places heavenly places is not up when you look up what you see is your ceiling heavenly places is a location of ranking in the spirit because you see there is order in the spirit even among the demonic kingdom they respect order it was paul that gave us the organogram he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against what principalities against powers there were a legion of demons in one man but it was not all of them that spoke they also believe in obedience so it's important that you understand that positional advantage because you are able to exert dominion over principalities and powers on account of the consciousness of your status is someone learning we have been raised up keep that scripture there please we have been raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. We have been raised up together. What is in heavenly places? You have to go to Ephesians chapter 1. Chapter 1 from verse 19. Let's see what is in these heavenly places. The Bible says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Next verse which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead. You see how intelligent Paul is. The first information he gives the church in Ephesus is that Jesus was raised from the dead and made to sit in heavenly places. When we get to chapter 2, he says, in continuing that revelation, you were raised together. Keep the scripture there, please. And set him at his right hand in heavenly places 21 he gives perspective to the implication of being in heavenly places that realm that is far above that organogram that paul would list far above principalities far above powers far above might far above dominion far above every other office that is named not only in this realm but that even in the world to come your status will still hold Listen, this is very powerful. There are many people trying to cast out demons and you find out by the next day your hand is not working again because you came with a blind approach, not from the standpoint of your positional advantage. Your feet may be stepping upon the shores of Abuja or any region, but the Bible says in ranking you have been exalted to the very position as Jesus was being coronated. The Bible says in him and with him we sat at that right hand of power. That means every believer in Christ who has this understanding 
can tell any demon, any spirit, in the name of Jesus, you have oppressed my family. I, I have been coming to you as a Nigerian. I've been coming to you as a Yoruba man. I've been coming to you as a Hausa man. But I come from my exalted position. I come with the consciousness of my office. The devil does not respect your earthly locality. No, the devil does not respect your age or your gender. The protocol in the spirit is obedience is based on ranking and spiritual status. Your positional advantage is someone learning. Mm. So you may look ordinary for as long as you think you are ordinary. But the moment you have this awareness, listen, this is not some Pentecostal jamboree. No, no, no. This is, is it is truth. The devil knows that this is true. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Same power that conquered the grave. tell you the truth when I stand to minister to, for, to people I don't stand with the consciousness of this pulpit this is too low for authority no what is the distance between this and the ground you stand from an exalted position this is not pride it is the truth in the army there are generals is that true and even among generals there are rankings there are colonels, lieutenant colonels, and then like that. It, the Bible says, a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. A man of honor, a man who has been exalted and does not know. A man of honor who does not know. Waiting for the amount in your bank account to impart faith to make you know you are risen with Christ will cost you a lot. Waiting for the applause of men. You must carry this consciousness. It is not a privilege of preachers. It is not a privilege of the Western world. The same Lord is rich unto all. They say, I perceive, I see that God is no respecter of persons. Exalted. 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 His possibilities become my possibilities. Exalted. In the name of Jesus Christ, far above, great fathers of faith like Bishop Oyedeko will call it a far above mentality. And they've proven it with their lives. The Bible says, he that cometh from above, give us John 3, 31. He that cometh from above is above all. He that cometh from the north is a northerner. He that cometh from the south is a southerner. He that cometh from America is an American. But he that cometh from above is above all. Is above all. Is above all. Above causes. Above yokes. Above limitations. He that cometh from above. The preacher that comes from above, the businessman that comes from above, the parents that comes from above, the career person that comes from above. I am more than a Nigerian. As much as I'm proud of being a Nigerian, it, it, it is more than being a Nigerian, more than being an, an African, more than being on the earth here. I may not look like it, but the Bible says I come from above. Prophesy to yourself, I come from above. I come from above. In the name of Jesus, shake off limitations. Shake off the negative speakings of men. I come from above. Hallelujah. Man of God, the day you carry this consciousness, it should not plant pride 
but there is a settled confidence I come from above that means everything will be exempted for me it can't be normal when it comes to my turn no there is an advantage and I insist that at that advantage be reflected in my life he that cometh from above do you believe the Bible now you see sit down please please sit Satan listen my dear people Satan is the master of the sense realm he knows that until the believer is properly mentored to a point where you become spiritually minded there is such a thing as being spiritually minded and there is such a thing as being carnally minded are we Bible students the Bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace what does it mean to be carnally minded? That means your convictions are based on the impulses of the flesh, the impulses of the sense realm. If I check my account and I see a thousand naira there and I look and find myself in one small room and I'm trekking with no vehicle, I use those things to now describe myself and I feel stupid for believing what the word of God has said. So because Satan knows that except the believer is properly mentored to be spiritually minded, Minded, the default state is to use the things around you there are many wealthy people who are not seated in heavenly places there are many intelligent people who are not seated in heavenly places being seated in heavenly places is a status that comes as a gift by being in Christ the moment you have that understanding now you understand what I mean by the statement that we made earlier that the victory of the believer is not dependent or the dominion of the believer is not dependent on the victory of Christ alone it's dependent on your understanding there is a consciousness that swallows up limitation you can sit down in your one room and take Gary with honor still seated in heavenly places and you force that reality in that room to change and look like what the Word of God says do you believe what I'm saying? I'm seated with Christ. I'm seated with Christ. Seated with Christ. It has made me an overcomer. Seated with Christ. If you don't trust me, trust the person I'm seated with. Hallelujah. There are times that when they are giving offering in church, children may not have offering, but the people they are seated with can bail them out. Is that true? They can be passing the offering bag and you're seated with no offering and someone seated close to you who you are seated close to matters spiritually speaking so you don't feel bad now but physically speaking because the person you are seated close to is seated with Christ hmm. the Bible kept telling us and showing us the picture of God and Jesus a number of times when Stephen was about to be retired out of the many things the Bible records that he saw was that scenario the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of the father in honor of a Messiah who was coming home ladies and gentlemen I submit to you there is no greatness for anybody in Christ who does not understand this you are not the first to come from a weak background you are not the first to start ministry with all kinds of limitations your status becomes your advantage in this wicked world he that cometh from above let me indoctrinate you again he that cometh from above cometh from above you will always reflect your location he that cometh from above he that cometh from above is above all the Bible says he that is of the earth do you know he's he's listing different realities alongside the consciousness that activates them that means you have an an option of having an above mentality an earthly mentality and we will know your conviction by your speaking the Bible says he speaketh of the earth he that cometh from heaven 
is above all. What is all? Above everything. Above all. You don't see limitations in your life. Your only limitation is the voice of God and the law of process. What business does a plane have with a mountain? What business does a plane have with water? It is above. The concept of mountain and river and valley is a relative statement. It's very relative. A person who is flying 35,000 feet above sea level does not even know that he just passed a mountain. So what you call a mountain is a representation of the realm you are looking at things from. Are we together? What is the business of someone who is flying 35,000 above sea level with a snake that is moving on a mountain? Or a dog that is barking on the ground? Or an arm robber who is waiting on the ground? No. There are certain realities that will never reflect in your life until your mindset changes. Now, let me tell you the balance. Most believers have not been taught this positional advantage properly. It has translated to pride without revelation. So there are people who cannot start small. They say, God forbid, I will never take Gary in my life again. I will never take this. I can't stay in this one room. I am, no, 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 no. This is not, your physical realities does not, if a king stays in a hut, you call that hut a palace. It's not, it's not, listen, it is the, it is the king's influence that changes the environment, not the environment. Are we together? There's a particular king in this nation. I think he's still alive. He was king at age two. Two years. Some of you may come from his region. Two years, he became king. And you see this small boy with all kinds of rappers that look like they just wanted to snap him. Whether you believe him or not, he's king. And from that time till now, he's been king. Your positional advantage your positional advantage. I always marvel at an aircraft as it leaps. You will see it turning very slowly, lazily. Sometimes you are looking at your time and you are almost getting angry. And it looks like the plane spoiled. Just be patient. Let it get to the end of the runway. And it starts moving to a point that you cannot even tell what speed is at. And in literally, without exaggeration, in less than a minute, is already far above you, you. You just keep looking at things and houses now become like toys. The Bible now says we have been raised up. It's a spiritual location. So when a spirit talks, verify what realm before you waste your time with heart attack and pain and whatever it is. If someone looks at you and says you will never amount to anything, before you waste your energy, verify from what standpoint? I truly believe this about myself and I'm proposing this understanding that this is what sponsors your victorious living. You will waste the experience of Easter if you just celebrate Jesus alone. You must know that as he was raised, I was raised with him. I was raised with him. I was not raised with him as an apostle. I was raised with him as a believer. I am first a believer before a man of God. When you strip me of everything I have, the last thing that will be left is my status as a believer. And the Bible tells that it is the greatest status. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God, not men of God. Sons of God is a greater status than a man of God. A man of God is a description that shows the geography of your assignment. A man of God does not describe your identity with God. But being a son of God, the child of a CEO and a board member in that company, in terms of status and access, who is greater? Hmm. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Ah. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome that I'm just a mortal man. 
Unassisted, outside of Christ, we are mortal men. The word mortal means death doomed, subject to deterioration at any point. That's what it means to be mortal. But when you are joined to Christ, let's continue. So in discussing the identity of the believer, the first thing we are looking at is your positional advantage, your exalted position, elevated in ranking. I wish we had time, we would have looked at the adumbration of this in Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41, when you read from verse 40, what happened to the man you called Joseph in Egypt was a foreshadow of what was going to happen to the believer. Are we together now? So Joseph interprets the dream of Pharaoh and in an instant he is exalted. Thou shalt be over my house, Pharaoh said, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. 41. It says, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land. 42. It says, and Pharaoh took off the ring of his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. 43. And he made him to ride on the second chariot which we, he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Seated with Christ in that exalted position. Number two, the second dimension of our oneness with Christ that helps to establish the victory that we now have in Christ or the second dimension of our identity in Christ I meant to say is our oneness with Christ so we're looking at two things as far as the identity of the believer is concerned number one our positional advantage and then number two our oneness with Christ let's discuss oneness Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 30 to 32 isn't it very interesting that when it had to do with oneness the only example the apostle could get to explain the extent of our oneness with Christ is marriage it says for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones watch this 31 for this cause this understanding for this cause the intention to use marriage to exemplify you see that the mystery between christ and his church shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and they too shall be called what it didn't say they shall be called strangers who have been joined with a ring it took more than a ring to bring them together a ring was just a token are we together 32 it says this is a great mystery that means marriage among the many things it seeks to provide is the most graphic representation of the extent of the oneness of the believer with Christ are we together the same way when a man gets married to his wife she changes her name and begins to bear his son name am I right on that you now call her Mrs. his name Give me that scripture please the bible now said it is a great mystery he says paul is saying but this is not marriage seminar i'm speaking about christ and the church christ acting as the husband and the church now as the wife i have taught you this that theologically speaking is called the doctrine of interpenetration is the mystery by which two entities become one different people but now bound by that covenant in ancient times they had what they called a salt covenant a salt covenant was a way of describing the depth of unity that could exist between two people so if two people were to step into a covenant and they meant business everyone would come with a measure of their salt watch this now and they would pour it in a container this will pour this will pour and then they would shake it and mix it together the condition for that covenant to break is for everybody to pick the salts they brought are we together now inseparable 
and the church is married to a responsible husband. For starters, he came to die for you even while you were yet a sinner. Number two, he's exalted and he carried you along. Are you seeing responsibility? Number three, while he's seated, he's still interceding. Oneness with Christ. Oneness with Christ. Oneness with Christ. Let's look at a few scriptures. John 14, 17. John 14, 17. John 14, 17. Watch this. Our oneness with Christ is sponsored by the presence of the Spirit of the living God. Watch this. The Spirit of the living God is the principal factor that provides the basis for our oneness with God. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Why? Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Jesus is speaking now. He's telling them about an experience that would happen shortly. For he dwelleth with you, now he shall be in you. John 17 and verse 20. Jesus is speaking concerning our oneness. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them which also shall believe on me through thy word. Aha, uh -huh, 21. It says that they may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. Are we together? That they may also be in us. Look at the description of the oneness. I am in you, you are in me. Now for the believer in Christ, that he is now part of us, as far as that oneness is concerned, that the world may know that thou hast sent me. 22. It says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one as we are one. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Let's read together. Very simple expression. Ready? One to read. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. One more time. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Do you know what that means? That everything that makes Jesus, Jesus, both in his earth work and his glorified state, he has freely shared it with you through his spirit. The implication of your being one with Christ, listen carefully, is that number one, you are a recipient of his life. When he says, I am the vine and you are the branches, it is the same nutrient that flows from the vine to the branches and then expresses itself as the fruit. You know what the branch is? The fruit bearing part of the vine. You want to know how healthy the vine is? Look at the branches and then the fruits that come from them. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Romans 8, 11. Please write. Romans 8, 11. The Bible says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, it says, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. Look up, please. It is my prayer, and I will tell you, I still continue to press into this as a person. It is my prayer that we come into the full comprehension of this mystery. I believe that before Jesus Christ comes, there will be a practical manifestation of dominion over sickness and diseases it looks like this dimension of dominion i submit to you for some reason it looks like the church has declined in working in this dominion for various reasons there are scientific reasons there are climatic reasons atmospheric reasons all kinds of things the kind of food that we eat but i can tell you the bible says that the, the implication of our oneness with christ is that something can happen to your body that stops it from deterioration and that you walk in health and vitality eating well is wonderful 
But that is not the reason why the Bible tells you you are, you should, you are free of sickness. I believe in eating well. I believe in uh, all the medical things. But I've, I've cautioned us, don't be careless. We have doctors here. If you are not feeling well, go to the back, go and meet them. They will treat you and you are still a Christian. Are we together? We are not going to be foolish in addressing spiritual things and allow people to die. The doctors are not antichrist. While your faith is growing to stand and you know, at, to, in a position now where you can be free of sickness. Doctors, hospitals, and medicine are expressions of God's mercy. So please, don't feel bad. Don't go and swallow drugs in secret and come and tell lies and say, I don't take drugs. That's not the issue. Thank God for your understanding, but let's be truthful and be matured and take away any kind of childishness out of the body of Christ. Treat yourself with honor. Go to the hospital with honor. Take responsibility over your body. But at the back of everything you do, please do not ignore the Spirit of God. The Bible says if that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if that same Spirit, that same Spirit, not another, that raised Christ from the dead dwells, that means if it is true that God did not lie, if it is true that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it says that same spirit shall quicken. The word quicken there means administer vitality, health to your mortal body by the same spirit. I submit to you that the body of Christ is yet to come into the fullness of this revelation. There are people here and there who have caught it, but if we are to be very honest, there's nothing embarrassing about it. It is a dimension we can press to with faith and understanding. God does not lie. This Bible you see cannot be broken. Let God be true. And every man, including our experiences, be liars. Whilst we trust God for the ministry of doctors, we must get to a point where we carry this consciousness. I am one with Christ. Someone say, I'm one with Christ. Because we live in very evil days. You will see a teenager, headache, headache, and the next thing they will tell you they found a tumor there. Are we together? And you are wondering, how old is this child who was a healthy child? I hope you know that some of these demonic things are devilish. Are we together? I heard about someone who got up in the morning, I mean played around and went to bed. Got up in the morning and was completely blind. No symptom, no progression, completely. I've heard of people who within a span of one to two months, they just had an acceleration of cancer cells until it got to stage four. Just like that. I believe in this healing wave. I believe in the vitality of the saints. We don't contend for divine health because of fear of death. Death has already been conquered based on our positional advantage. The Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. It didn't say to be traveling somewhere, to be present with the Lord. So whether in this life or beyond this life we are victorious and let me encourage you if you've lost any loved one to sickness bodily deterioration accidents activities of terrorists etc please find hope based on the integrity of scripture find hope and comfort that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord nonetheless we are given the assignment to keep progressing in our knowledge until we attain a point where we can dare sickness. We can look at these evil spirits that were sent from hell. I wish I had the time. I would have shown you the spirits that were released to the earth in the book of Revelation. They were released to the earth and they were given certain assignments. Kill a third of the people. It was a mandate. And then there was the rider upon a pale horse having the pair of balances and the Bible says his name is death and his assignment is to kill men. No devil will take my life before my time.
in the name of Jesus Christ many people are afraid now because it looks like scripture cannot be trusted again when it has to do with this issue of divine health and longevity these are the scariest areas for believers right now because it looks like there is a growing dominion of sicknesses and diseases over believers are we together to a point where it seems unusual right now for an average person to be free of any sickness it looks unusual but I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that before Christ returns there will be a manifestation of this revelation there are saints of God without pretense and lying who will walk in the reality of this resurrection power if you believe that shout amen, amen. what's that beautiful song you sang by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat I don't know the other part sing it for me listening to Papa Kenneth, Cop Kenneth Copeland and you can imagine that man in his 80s and he's one of the people that have represented an inspiration to the body of Christ sickness and health is one area you cannot fake for too long if you are lying eventually age mixed with wickedness and demon spirits will catch up with you the Bible talks about Joshua and Caleb. These were men who were strong and even in their 80s, their natural strength was not abated. Is it not in your Bible? Hmm. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. I have read from church history books a few men who walked upon this earth and demonstrated that this thing called divine hell the dominion of the saints over spirits that afflict is a reality please do not I'm going to pray for people before we end up who are having all kinds of plagues of sickness but you don't know how angry I am in my spirit not just because of my call by the privilege of what I do, I have been to many hospitals praying for people. I have seen how sickness can literally trap the life of, of not just the victim, but the entire family. That every, they keep building projects at a halt. They keep education as a halt. Everything must wait to honor that spirit. The resurrected king is resurrecting me that's what is happening do, do, listen listen do you know how wicked sickness is it does not care whether you are Muslim Christian whether you are a baby I've prayed for babies that I can how wicked can Satan be Just when you built your house and you want to rejoice with your children, you get up in the morning and one part of your leg cannot walk. I was shown one of our dear ladies, she probably may be here. Something happened to the father and he said he just felt pain on his leg. 
and the next thing when I saw the picture it was like twice the size of a normal leg and everything was already rotting. don't tell me it just happened there is something these spirits know that the church is yet to know and the secret is not just in bold face somebody must be given the mandate to reintroduce this thing to the body of Christ with authenticity and I'm praying that God will be able to trust us that in our generation we'll be able to say we have found something we have among the keys that we have been given that we can administer the same way you can minister the baptism the same way you can teach a person from being poor to be prosperous the same way you can mentor a person John G Lake the Bible says at the time of John Lake in Spokane that they had healing rooms It's in your history books they would keep people there for 30 days under a strong influence of the healing anointing and afterwards you will find them walk great men like Kenneth E. Hagen, Charles and Francis Hunter, E. W. Kenyon, name them. Ah! By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrected. of a blessing you will be if you can heal just one sickness just one category effortlessly you know how many people on earth they will look for you they will pay to see you they will cry to do whatever that is how degraded man has become we need a restoration we are tired of talk and claims of unverified stories authentic manifestations of the healing power of Jesus not just from one person or one man of God two or three men of God are too small to handle this urgency we need a widespread manifestation of the healing power of Jesus all across this nation across Africa one with Christ if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead the dead body of Jesus was lying on the tomb and the Spirit of God came and entered that tomb and resurrected that body now the Bible says that same spirit lives in you listen listen just help those under the anointing listen carefully Hear me. The bit that we have gotten is what is the, the little revelation that we have scratched is what is producing what people call an outstanding ministry right now. And yet compared to what we still have to learn and know and manifest, we are still toddlers as far as understanding when it comes to the healing ministry i submit to you on earth today there are great men but there are few people that can beat their chest and say generals of healing let's not lie to ourselves you know what it means to be a general you have mastered the dynamics of reproducing a result under any condition there are generals of prosperity there are generals of teaching but my goodness the world is waiting 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 and let me tell you church of the Lord Jesus Christ if we do not validate this oneness by the results that we produce a day will come familiar spirits will partner with men and women and you will begin to see similitudes of many healings that are antichrist and no matter what you say about it it will not make any difference because if your child is dying and you're a responsible parent you will look for anything within your power to keep that child alive while on one hand we are shouting and telling people don't go to Habalis, have you been able to be a worthy alternative? A man who healed someone's son, someone's daughter, healed the whole family through divination of HIV. Now you are saying you should not go to that man. Jesus heals. Prove it. 
and at the end of it we finish the service and share the grace and then we boast and say three people were healed out of how many and have those three been verified uh, listen I'm not being we thank God for what God is doing so far but let me tell you the truth when I return back in spite of the mighty things that God does here I know what an avalanche of the power of God can do there are a few things we have laid hold on by the grace of God we must press to reveal the reality of this oneness John G Lake when the plague hit the city where he was people were dying and if you contacted that plague just like a coronavirus was it would kill you there the foam from the mouth history records and he was helping the people to bring out the dead bodies and those who were affected and the medical people warned him they said be careful you are putting your life at risk and they were right and he said no then it, an experiment was performed we're told where they put the foam from the mouth of one who was dead and they found out I was told that the whole the whole thing just died like that they couldn't find anything alive it couldn't affect him hmm. can I tell you there are arrows that fly by day that are being released to the earth that we have not seen there are spirits that I'm, I'm not making you afraid except you don't believe the Bible there are sicknesses that will not have names medical science is coming to a point of honest admission right now that there are things that their machines cannot diagnose are we together now mysterious occurrences satanic manifestations just like that a child wakes up in the morning and that's the end of it cannot see cannot walk cannot talk they go to the hospital and they find out that that child has some feet problem some heart problem just like that someone just collapses on the ground and they find out Abba. church of the Lord Jesus Christ preaching is powerful but you see what we preach as resurrection today was not a sermon it was an activity that happened are we together the times I have seen the manifest power of God to lift to heal I have been blessed watching those people who were healed you don't know what it means for a family when they experience the authentic power of God to heal verified verified that someone who was diagnosed stage 4 cancer the person goes to the hospital and you run all the tests and they say you are cancer free completely what 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 do you know how many sermons will come out of that testimony the world is tired of the lots of noise that we keep making we need to understand that our oneness with Christ if true has an implication that we must demonstrate here and now is someone learning by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected King is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected King is resurrecting me some of you as you are listening to me right now there are sick people in your family some of you as you came here now you are here with all kinds of death sentences celebrating Easter without experiencing the power is a mockery of God to the world did you hear what I said celebrating Easter without the power made manifest is a mockery of God to the world the power component the ability to validate that resurrection write this down write this down write this down write this down my spirit is fired up now write this down
please play the strings for me. Watch this. I wrote something down here. By reason, by reason of our positional advantage and our oneness with Christ, we now have access to the following. Please write. By reason of our positional advantage and then our oneness with Christ through his spirit, we have access to the blessings of his blood. Write please. We have access to the blessings of his blood, his life, his word, his name, his presence, and his power. Let me take it again. By reason of our exalted position, our positional advantage, and then our oneness with Christ, we have access to the blessings of his blood, the blessings of his life, the blessings of his word, the blessings of his name, the blessings of his presence, the blessings of his power. So when you say you are a believer, you are one who in Christ has been exposed to these forces of victory, that you have access to the blessings that come with his blood, his life, I repeat, his word, his name, his presence, and his power. Write this down. Our mandate, please start this statement. It is one of the major statements that I came tonight to tell you. If you can summarize everything I have taught you, it is captured in this statement you are about to write. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection. Write that down. You will still continue the statement, but write it down. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection. The greater task is to be validators of his resurrection. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection as a ritual, a moment in time, March or April. The greater task is to be validators of his resurrection. And that is the topic of this discussion tonight. Validators of his resurrection. How? By revealing the kingdom, the power, and the glory of this Jesus. This Jesus we claim died. This Jesus we claim rose again and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. The greater task is to be validators of his resurrection by revealing the power, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus. Listen to me. Easter is not a ceremony. No, there is no power in the observance of the dates. The real way to celebrate Easter is to become validators of that resurrection. When you are a validator of that resurrection, you are celebrating Easter every day. Not just one day. Yes, of course, it may be profitable to commemorate those times just to keep us in the knowledge that Christ did this. And if that is our understanding, that is fine. But if it's just a blind Christian ritual, then it will soon turn to idolatry because in itself it will not have any power. The real power of Easter is that we obtain grace at this time to be validators of his resurrection by ensuring that from us and through us there will be a revelation of the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus revealed through the saints to be a blessing to the world is the true essence of Easter. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. I'd like us to read it together. 
one to read and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all it took more than celebration to give witness the Bible says with great power let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your holy light let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light this is the prophetic word for someone let hope rise darkness trembles in your light. hear me god did not send us here to just be celebrators of an event we have been given a mantle and a mandate from heaven that as far as you are alive that this territory will not forget god by the abundance of the witness that your life provides the Bible calls us validators. There is a claim that God brought Jesus to prove. And we are alive today, here and now, to be validators of those claims. When Jesus came in Luke chapter 4, he entered the temple and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah. And he flipped to where it was written, Isaiah 61. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me preach the gospel to the poor he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovery of sight to them that are bruised the Bible says when he was done the eyes of all of them were fastened upon him and they looked at him and he said this scripture is fulfilled in your ears and he looked through the congregation the healing ministry according to Luke's synoptic account was one of the first validations he saw a man with a withered hand and he said stretch your hand and that man stretched his hand no assumption no whether you were healed or not healed Jesus for you he went to Cana of Galilee according to John chapter 2 the first miracle recorded according to John's synoptic account. The Bible says wine had finished. But watch Jesus. He was right there in that occasion. And he said, don't worry, there is something we can do. The presence of the kingdom is here. And let me show you the power and the glory that comes with this kingdom. Fill six vessels and fetch the water. Take it to the rulers. We claim that we have the same spirit. We pray in tongues and shout in tongues, but the benefit, the proof of that oneness is not there. There's nothing wrong with our prayer and all of that. It's only that, do you know why the world keeps looking at the Christian faith as a nuisance to civilization? Because respectfully speaking, we are full of activities, energetic activities that demand our time, money, and investment. But there is an evidence that the world is waiting for. Allah parusiata. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, God has not called us to be a continuation of this limitation. The body of Christ has tried, but we must step up the bar. Easter is a reminder. Easter is a wake-up call. He said, awake thou that sleepest. It is not just a time to eat chicken and turkey. That's wonderful. But beyond that, you must go back and ask yourself, am I a true validator or am I just a, a, a person discussing Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 it says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation of the sons of God verse 20 says for creation was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him that subjected the same in hope 21 says because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the saints hear me 
everyone who is listening to me here in Zaria, all the overflows outside our global family, there is a mandate and a mantle upon your life to be a validator. Easter is not just a time to say, wow, we finished Easter now. The next one is Christmas. We keep recycling these rituals and they become burdensome rituals with no power. They can even become hedonistic activities that end up most people reject Jesus during these festive periods because their lives are full of practices that are even anti-resurrection. Most times around these periods, all people do is just to dance, to eat, and to drink. And it's even those who don't know Jesus that celebrate it most. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. We look to Ephesians 2 10 then we'll go to 3 10 Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 then we'll do 3 and verse 10 the Bible says for we are his workmanship say amen, amen. created in Christ Jesus the same way a black a blacksmith would sit down and begin to fashion a farming tool because of the kind of work it will do are we together now there was a time I was looking for a particular video and then I stumbled across this video where uh, very heavy steel materials are created that crush metals, cars, and all of those things. And you, you would watch them squeeze a car, squeeze anything at all. Just squeeze it like a piece of paper as it passes through. And I said, that's it. So the Bible says we are his workmanship. You were fashioned. The nature of your build tells you your assignment. The nature of your build. God took time to pour himself into you. The Bible says, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained. So our good works is consistent with his predeterminate counsel. For ordained that we should walk in them. Give us chapter 3 and verse 10. To the intent. What intent? Paul said unto me, I'm the least of all the saints, but this grace was given to me to teach men the unsearchable riches of Christ to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the ecclesia, the manifold wisdom of God. There is a dimension of God's grace and power and kingdom and glory and wisdom that the world is waiting for. Listen to me. It takes more than being an inventor to take the world. I can tell you one area where the world is desperately crying for is dominion over time, dominion over wicked spirits that afflict men. This is trouble that both the rich, the poor, the educated, the uneducated, Africa and the West. The world has not been able to come up with a permanent solution of dominion over wicked spirits. It is the one thing that puts all of us in the same position, naturally speaking. The wealthy man is looking for solution for his health, his longevity and his life. The weak man is looking for the same thing. In Africa, we are crying. In Europe, we are crying. In America, we are crying. Because when it has to do with this one, the answer is not on earth. The answer only resides with he that is seated on the throne. Jesus walked upon the earth and demonstrated invincibility. These spirits cried. They begged him, begged him, don't cast us from here. And with one word, he said, go. And that was it. 
we sing all kinds of songs that implicate us what manner of man is Jesus we clap and we dance he made the blind to see and while we're saying it almost every case we are calling has the people represented there and we finish preaching and we say let's share the grace we organize all kinds of things miracle services healing services and I, I'm not downplaying it we're doing our best with what we know but I'm telling you, we need to raise the bar with all honesty and reintroduce the power of Jesus to the world again. They have a right to reject our Jesus until we can prove he's alive. Not say he's alive. Not sing he's alive. Not argue that he's alive. And evidence is the end of all arguments. The assignment of an evidence is that it comes as a token of truthfulness. When you go to the court of law, it is not your noise the judge is waiting for. They may listen to you patiently or impatiently, but when they get tired, they ask you, do you have your evidence? That is why arguing in the secular, you must come with statistics, facts, and figures. When you come and say, this one is happening, they say, prove it. Have you done a thorough research? Have you come up with statistics? So when we travel across the nations and we dare people and say, Jesus is Lord, they have a right to sit down and say, what do you mean he is Lord? Jesus is Lord. I need that Lord over the condition of my child. Watch Jesus. He meets a woman at Nain and says, I, it's, a, it's an expensive statement to say, I am Lord. Bring that coffin down. And he lifts that dead body. He goes to meet Jarius's daughter. And he was interrupted by the woman with the issue of blood. By the time he's done with her, Jairus' daughter is dead. And he says, no problem. With me, there's nothing like too late. Get out of the room. Talita Kumi, little girl, I say unto you, arise. Naaman was a man who was leprous. It was not a parable. And the prophet casually, without hoping it to work, go and wash seven times. And you will know there is a prophet in Israel. Today we call ourselves prophets and apostles. And thank God we are trying. But ah, in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty, we need to draw this bar and stretch it wide enough. In, in, in the days of the Bible, if you were called a prophet, it was almost like you were God. When a donkey got missing, after three days, they said, let's not be fools looking around. There is a man we know not there is a place they stopped the issue of location they said there is a personality that embodies the possibilities of god this mysterious entity called samuel that his word does not fall to the ground whatever it is between him and god we do not know but we know that this is a human being and a half let's go and meet him and they were on their way watch this and true to their word as soon as they saw samuel the donkey started going home what kind of a wicked donkey is that that will allow his owners to suffer and then as soon as you meet a prophet the donkey was on his way going back home mm. may god take us to these realms can you imagine that the new testament was founded upon better promises and yet we are yet to touch and scratch that dimension there is something this man knew about God that we need to pray that God will import to our lives and our generation otherwise we will continue to mock the integrity and the potency of God's Word there are all kinds of movements editing the Bible downplaying saying God did not mean this because when you don't have proof for many years you have to create a theology to, to downplay what happened are we together the apostle was teaching and somebody died and he said sorry he went out raised the person brought the person back and the lecture continued Kai. Alisha katariata. oh let revival come again let it come again let it come whatever made us become this dead whatever made us celebrating spiritual mediocrity from place to place there is there is there is a high calling a high standard are we together Samuel looks at Saul and says let us go up and I will tell you what is in your heart is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his army and he said three things will happen to you because you met me number one 
the donkey that has been missing on your way back you will find out it has been discovered number two you will meet three men holding two loaf of bread they will salute you and give you which you should receive number three you will come to the garrison of the philistines he says and that when you come there the hand of the lord will come upon you the spirit of god will be upon you and you will prophesy look at the man elijah resting upon the mountain and they bring an arm in bands of 50. look at how this guy suffered in military school and stood before a prophet and he downplayed their training with one shout from heaven fire came down and roasted all of them they brought another band again the third band begged they said we are military people but we're not stupid brothers and sisters nothing this powerful listen nothing this powerful should easily go out of fashion christianity is fading away because the the wow factor the attracting factor in the faith work is dwindling and fading and what is left are just religious rituals and the celebrating of men as superstars and God is tired of that there needs to be a definite restoration of power the power of the Holy Spirit the power of the Holy Spirit I'm not even talking of your ability to heal everything let's even say you just obtain the grace to heal cancer alone that you can come up and say any other thing I've not caught the revelation but if it is cancer forward match let me tell you you will worry yourself like Moses from morning till night because you will see a cue that unifies both rich and poor male and female people will travel from every place and they will come that they have learned that God is with you there are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there will be no end. Hear me, in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone here under the sound of my voice, and it is part of your prophetic destiny to carry this healing anointing i stand right now and i stretch my hands wherever you are may that mantle begin to locate you now may that mantle begin to locate you now the mantle that grants you the grace to validate the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus obtain that grace now Hear me, hear me. I can tell you the truth. Mantles do not leave the earth. Every mantle you see in the Bible and every mantle you see in modern history is still hovering around the earth, waiting for aligned vessels. And God is crying in these days. This is the sound of the spirit that Easter should not just be a time of blind celebration, but for, for, for God's sake, that someone's life can begin to cry Maranatha come healing grace come healing grace come Lord Jesus come Lord Jesus dominion over wicked spirits that cut short the life of people and plague their bodies thank God for the little we are doing but for God's sake let's contend for higher levels he showed me a river. He measured a thousand cubits. It was to my feet, a thousand cubits. It was to my knees, a thousand cubits. It was to my loins, and a thousand cubits, an overflowing river. A thousand cubits. There are kings. There are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are kings, there are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are
there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength, but only a true a covenant with my life that Lord whatever it will take to hold superior dimensions of your power for my generation I will pay that price in Christ I will obtain grace to press because I will never join a queue that keeps misrepresenting the power and the potential of the kingdom Ladies and gentlemen, we must graduate from falling down and shouting in church to producing valid results that demonstrate the resurrection of Christ. The Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and great grace, great grace, great grace. That was what was responsible. Great grace. Great grace. that people will run to your house while you are sleeping they are patient we are not here to wake you we know God is with you we will wait until you wake up because we know that one declaration from you can rewrite the realities of our life this is not human worship the Bible calls God being embodied in a man a mystery of godliness it's a great is a mystery of godliness that God became a man seen of men and angels he said as my father has sent me so send I you the gospel was never supposed to be this difficult to communicate the difficulty is the alternative we try to bring to explain away the absence of authentic results hear me what do you tell a woman who comes to church with her child because you told them that Jesus heals. How do you explain a woman who comes to church, say by 7 a.m. in the morning, for a service that will start at 3 or 4, and she sits down with the expectation that Jesus will meet her child? Do you know what will happen to that woman as she drags that child back home? And they say, you went to church in the morning. Some even take a step of faith to take the child out from the hospital and say after all you're on your way dying but I hear Christians say Jesus resurrected let us bring him there this is not about the issue of being called into the healing ministry or not except you hate Jesus you should contend for the healing anointing in this end time more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life let that be the prayer of a generation us that the average lifespan in Africa last I checked is 48 years that means the moment you get to 48 years in Africa most likely it's countdown for you where is that here and yet respectfully speaking we are all here men and women of God believers all kinds of books the Bible we have, we keep printing it in different versions for better understanding. I'm not being sarcastic. Let me tell you, anybody who loves God must throw away that arrival mentality and we must begin to cry in all honesty because thank God for the little we have done. And I say little without a sense of exaggeration. Relative to what we need to bring as we usher in the return of Christ, let God be true. 
there are virgin dimensions of power we are yet to get to and we must learn how to hold on to the four horns of the altar and cry until mantles are falling here tonight once again anointings are falling here tonight once again graces are falling here tonight once again graces are falling here tonight once again for the kings to arise for revival to return a couple that greatly mentored me in the area of healing through their materials Charles and Francis Hunter and I remember they wrote a book a little book it was captured in a statement that one manifestation of healing is worth a thousand sermons I agree I agree I agree that one person rising from a wheelchair is greater than many series put together no wonder the bible calls men living epistles that a man's life can be a sermon and it can preach more articulately than any other person regardless your level of oratory i taught you here commanding salvation over territories listen to the message i told you that results are evangelists there is a sermon only results can preach there are certain sermons that only results can preach. Results are preachers. Results are preachers. Healing miracles are preachers. Supernatural manifestations of prosperity can preach the gospel. Breakthrough, favor, these manifestations of the kingdom, they are preachers. My assignment and your assignment is to be worthy conduits that the power of God can flow through us to the nations like a river a few a few weeks from now when UK bringing the gospel with the power of God among the many tens of thousands of people that are coming are people who are sick people who are oppressed hoping that these people coming will not be noisemakers again recycling our expectations and not making them granted do you know what jesus did to the fig tree that had leaves to attract him and not produce fruit he did not advise it he caused it my prayer for myself all the time it is that I do not become a man of God who attracts people proposing many things that I cannot defend listen every revelation God gives you before you start preaching it stay with God to access the grace dimension of that revelation the things we have seen the things we have heard the things our hands have handled of the word of life it says that is what we preach I am not ashamed of the gospel the apostle said for it is the power beyond the message it is the power I don't want to just talk about a healing Jesus I want to demonstrate a healing Jesus I don't just want to talk about a prospering Jesus I, I don't just want to talk about a delivering Jesus patriarchs of faith who have joined the cloud of witnesses now like Reinhard Bonke they would come and say Africa shall be saved and with the simplicity of their voices and their body language they moved across nation to nation and they, nothing could resist them they demonstrated they gave witness to the resurrection I once listened to a message by T.L. Osborne and almost half of the message I was in tears I was not in tears in self-condemnation I just cried and I said God what is this what happened to us at what point did we miss it was it poor mentorship 
Was it inadequate consecration? What At what point? Let me tell you this. Transformation will always be faster when there are models that now exemplify what people should enter into. For as long as we still tell people, be this, there has to be men who personify these possibilities. And we thank God for people in the body of Christ who at least have been able to show a roadmap. But I submit to you with every sense of responsibility, bragging at our current result will be a mockery of the integrity of God. Because I submit to you, there is still a long journey. For as long as there are cancer people dying, the doctors now depend on us for support and we are disappointing them. We mock and insult doctors and say, doctors, you are useless. We believe in the power of God. The doctors have said, okay, we agree we are limited. Come and help us. They give us access to hospitals to pray for the sick. Even against the ethics of their practice because we propose to them that we have superior power and yet we've not been able to demonstrate it. And with gallancy, they tell us, get out. Keep arguing your case while we do our best as instruments of mercy. It is my prayer that my generation will be able to stand and lift among the many graces. We are not called to do everything but this healing banner. Not to brag and say, I had a meeting, five people were healed. What does that mean? Glory be to God, but relative to what? When a student scores five over 100, did he pass? Dear lecturer, please answer me, did he pass? No. 5% is wonderful. You didn't get zero, but you still failed. They will categorize you together with the person who did not even write the exam. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. Till Christ be formed in me. Till Christ be formed in me. I'm forced to recall the vision that I had many years ago. And in that vision, I was in an environment, it was a night time, just like it is when it's night or when there's a curfew. And I saw all kinds of sick people, terrible diseases. And they were lying there. You know how, especially in parts of the north, you just have people who have all kinds of sicknesses and they were there. And I came, I was heartbroken. And I began to sob, to weep, to look at these people because I felt very helpless. I had the heart and the compassion to help them. But the grace was not there. And then I heard a voice and that voice spoke to me and it says, heal them. You see, like many of you have slept and seen yourselves in crusade grounds. Many of you have slept and seen yourselves healing. But don't let it die as a dream. It is destiny calling on you. It is a mantle revolving around you and saying, when will you respond? You think God has the time to waste those kinds of dreams? Why do you think it keeps coming? Man of God, don't be celebrating mundane things whereas there are superior demands in the spirit. You go to bed and there you see someone on a wheelchair watching you. And then you try to pray for the person. I will never forget many years ago. I went to pray for someone in Zaria then. And I sincerely, they gathered as a family. The person had a problem with the back and was, you know, grounded on a wheelchair. And they came believing. They had heard of the little that God was doing. And they truly believed. Suspended everything because I was coming to their house. So you could not say they did not have faith. What then is faith? They believed. 
and I preached a very sound message you could make a series out of that message powerful message like many of us keep doing and then when I was done when it was now time to give witness to the resurrection I was there and I believed well I don't know now but I believed that I had faith except that I stood before that crippled person and I said in the name of Jesus with every ounce of faith in me and absolutely nothing happened not many people will be honest to tell you this as men of God we like sounding as if everybody <clears throat> I felt so bad that day how could I preach so much imagine the miracle imagine such a powerful sermon sound exegesis of healing now the moment had come to give witness does it look like what is still happening today in many of our circles when it has to do with teaching what God can do we have done well he can heal when it has to do with singing it, my goodness. When it has to do with acting drama of healing. You know, youth groups and teenage groups in churches act drama so beautifully. You would see how Jesus resurrected and how Satan is falling up and down. Except that unfortunately that is acting for many people. When the sick become healed. When the oppressed become delivered when we make isaiah 61 come alive again ladies and gentlemen there will be a wave of civilization that the church will reintroduce i hope you know it is results that define civilizations i give you an instance it was the discovery of the internet that literally brought another kind of civilization now electric cars are coming is that true yes now virtual reality and all kinds of things the metaverse con uh, concept internet of things all of these advancements in technology they are literally civilization does not just happen it's a man's courage backed up by his intention an individual can get up like one person got up introduced the internet and now most of our children and teenagers do not even know what a typewriter looks like you see little children and all they know is to flip they don't know how to punch they don't know what keypads look like that is how believers can reintroduce a civilization that a day will come when many people will run and say come let us go to the house of the Lord does that look like a scripture you have read that it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain listen it's more than prosperity talk this is beyond money we're talking of intangible things that money cannot buy like the power of God he said don't money perish with you for you think you can buy the gift of God do you know how many people can carry their lives earning literally their lives earning they diagnose someone and say we need 20 30 million and that man has saved all his money representing all his labor and in one year it disappears and it's not like there is a guarantee for healing and while that is happening sadly and respectfully we men of god i come back to us again we're here jumping and bragging on stage whereas there are people dying and you see the real referee is not us the real referee are the unbelievers the unbelievers are the umpire they compare what we are saying versus what is producing from our lives and they say no this does not add up but the good news is that this will be one Easter that will be with a difference because for you your assignment tonight is not only to celebrate the ceremony of Easter but to know that there is a mantle that is looking for you there is a mandate crying for your destiny to become a validator God is depending on your witness the world has it have a right to say we lied do you know that when Jesus resurrected remember one of the synoptic accounts when they discovered that he was alive the Bible says they paid people and they said please make sure you say he's not alive satan is still paying people today paying systems and structures to say jesus is not alive
but our assignment is not just to sing up from the grave our assignment is not just to celebrate the ceremony I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore whoever you In the next two minutes I want us to pray wherever you are let this be your Easter gift to your destiny I want you to cry to the God of heaven and say the grace component that makes to be a validator of your resurrection I obtain someone open your mouth and pray Shalanda Breska Veratos Capari Catosha Vrendes Kemash Embra Catapa Catabaratos Capelecatos Yata. The grace, the grace to give evidence to the resurrection. The grace. Someone pray, someone pray. Father, I am available. Let it fall like it was in the day of Pentecost upon my life upon my singing ministry upon the word ministry you have given me upon my business let me become a validator of your resurrection not just a celebrator of your resurrection One minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone. Let me say this one time, and then I'll just speak over those who are trusting God. We have to do this at least to honor the resurrection of Jesus. Let me repeat the last statement that I made, that our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection the greater task is to be validators of his resurrection by revealing the kingdom the power the glory of this jesus apostle peter on the day of pentecost while he was preaching the first sermon after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he said, this same Jesus that you have been crucified, that you crucified, has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. The Bible says when they heard, they were caught to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive of this spirit. He says, for the promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, as many as are far off even as the Lord shall come. Let me take a minute out of our limited time already to just speak over those who are trusting God for a miracle. In one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing or your hand on your chest if you are standing for someone or trusting God for any kind of miracle. Let me just speak over your life to honor this day. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, every devil of darkness that has plagued anyone watching by television watching by the internet from our zaria family our global family all the overflows 
down to this auditorium in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power that raised Christ from the dead I command that spirit to give way now I decree and declare every sickness heart conditions be healed now cancer be healed now HIV be healed now kidney conditions lung conditions be healed now blood related conditions be healed now eye conditions be healed now ear conditions be healed now everyone here who has been bound by any spirit I lose you now I lose your family now I lose every member of your family now anyone here and those watching who has been appointed unto death in the name of Jesus Christ we declare the fullness of your days you fulfill And anyone here who is particularly in ministry serving the purposes of the kingdom from tonight I forbid you from being barren as you communicate the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ with great power you will bear witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ genotypes every negative genotype be changed right now in Jesus name barrenness be healed now hepatitis be healed now pile be healed now peptic ulcer be healed now bone related conditions be healed now who are watching from any hospital or any point where you have a patient let the power of God on this resurrection day move through the airwaves and touch that person right now in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you for all of you who are here from today I stand in the name of Jesus and I empower your hands I release you as proof producers I release you as miracle workers I release you as signs and wonders in ministry in business in career receive it in the name of Jesus Christ listen from today you will no longer wait until you come for koinonia become an extension of these possibilities in the name of Jesus Christ listen let me challenge you when you go back home go and meet those who are sick and take a step of faith and lay your hands on them don't say I cannot do it lay your hands if your loved ones tell you just remember I have been raised up with Christ just remember the Spirit of God lives in me that the resurrected King has resurrected everything in me I am you are an ambassador a validator a witness carry this mentality today hallelujah and as you do that in the name of Jesus may the Lord use you to rewrite the history of the lives of men The last thing I'll do when we're done, you need Jesus. Your relationship with Jesus is the most important component. I told you here, there are people whilst you heard me teach, whilst you heard me preach, the Lord began to speak to you, letting you know that you need Jesus. Let me your attention for a minute. Hear me. It is a terrible thing to reject Jesus, especially 
with the knowledge to give someone an opportunity before we wrap up tonight wherever you are very boldly without any sense of fear or shame i want you to leave your seat and come and stand here very quickly i'm going to count one to five jesus is calling you run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand i begin my counting one two the rest on the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrected me come your name come to I jesus at my little daughter come and join them jesus loves little children adults all kinds of people come if you are coming please come quickly i'm about to lead them to pray jesus is giving you a new beginning what an easter gift what an honor what what a gift to the king of kings come he's ready to give you a new beginning apostle i do not know if i'm saved or not you can have such a reality as the assurance of salvation Come to Jesus. And those who are connecting across the globe, here is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord. Even if you are following as a way of rebroadcast, Jesus is still giving you an opportunity right here, right now. Come. The resurrected King is resurrecting. Say this after me, all of you who have come, I salute your courage. Listen, everyone who comes to Jesus, the Bible declares that he will in no wise cast you away. Thank you for your courage and for making this decision. Lift your right hand if you can, high above your head as a sign of surrender. And say this after me, say, Lord Jesus, I declare that I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, on this Easter night, I make Jesus my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit, and I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from today i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your glorious hands lifted father thank you for these precious people by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven in the name of jesus i call you from hence bona fide recipients of the life of god I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. And I declare that you go from glory to glory and grace to grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, very quickly, I want you to please follow the... Uh, counselors they are by my right which will be your left you have a word a, a quick word with you and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go thank you so much <laughs> celebrate them <laughs> celebrate them Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now we can say Happy Easter. And then we understand what we're saying. We know why it is happy and we know why it is Easter. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you for your time and your patience. Please rise as we close. This song will be our anthem when we're done. I'd like you to sing it on your way out that the resurrected king is resurrecting everything that is dead in your life. Carry that far above mentality and carry the revelation of your oneness and with it go and bear witness to the resurrection may the lord bless you Amen. this week beginning i declare that you will experience the power of god like never before Amen. may the mighty and marvelous hand of jesus rest upon you Amen. i release you as a validator of the resurrection Amen. 
you will go and you will return with results for yourself and for others in the name of Jesus we pray let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen God bless you and see you next week Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Catacos, Cate Branda Catapacotosco to break a ticket at the The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.